How are you guys doing tonight? How are you guys doing tonight? Amen. Amen. Feels good to be in the house of the Lord, right? Amen. Amen. Everybody get up. You already know we're about to worship. Does it feel good to know that it doesn't matter what you go through, God's always going to make a way? Isn't it comforting to know that there's no sin that can separate you from God? That the veil has been torn and now a person who didn't even care about him, a person who probably said his name in vain and did a bunch of things that we're not going to name right now, but isn't it crazy how he looks at you like he looks at his perfect son? Isn't it truly a blessing that he has so much mercy, even though we don't deserve it, he just shows mercy and all he does is bless you? Isn't it amazing how there's no, his, his love is so unconditional in the sense of like, it doesn't matter how far you strayed or how long you took, he's just happy that you're home. Isn't that crazy? They said that it's the, the Bible says that it's the love of God that really brings you to repentance. It's the goodness of God that'll really keep you in repentance. It's the fear of God too. The fear of God and the fear of the Lord will, will make you kneel. But after you're done kneeling and you caught the revelation of his love, what keeps you next to him, what keeps you obedient is the love that you have for him, for the love that he has for you. I want to encourage you guys tonight. I'm going to read a scripture. John 15, 4 through 11 says, Abide in me, and I in you, as the branch cannot bear fruit of itself. Unless it abides in the vine, neither can you, unless you abide in me. I am the vine, you are the branches. He who abides in me, and I in him, bears much fruit. For without me, you can do nothing. That's amazing. It's God, Jesus is telling us that he's literally our lifeline. He's our life source. That without him, we can't have life. We don't even know what love is without Jesus. See, in the world, we will look for love and all these type of things. We will look for love and, and money. We will look for it in fulfillment in business, maybe even a partner, somebody who can love you and take care of you. That Not even that person will love you to the magnitude that God loves you. In the beginning it says, if you abide in me, I will abide in you and he will bear much fruit. Now the fruit of the spirit is the character of God. After you get saved, after God encounters you and the Holy Spirit touches you, you've given your life to Christ, it's time to bear the character of Christ. In order for you to bear the character of Christ, you must abide in him. By abiding in him means that you spend time with him. You don't use God like a genie. Whenever you need a blessing, you're just going to rub on something and it's gonna, he's just going to appear and grant you a wish. That's not how he works. He wants relationship. He wants to know you more deeply. He wants you to spend time with him and talk to him and, and, and put all of your fears, all of your worries at his feet. And once you start coming to him genuinely because you love him and be because he's so good is when you, you begin to change. Now he's not like your dad that you just ask him for money. Like, dad, I got, I got some issues right now, God. Can you, please, can you please take care of this for me? I really need a blessing right now, God. It doesn't become that no more. Now it becomes you come to him. It's like, God, I love you. Thank you, Jesus, for this day. Thank you, Father God, that I'm alive. You start loving and being so appreciative of the little things that he does for you. The little miracles in your life. The fact that you have breath in your lungs. The fact that you have blood running through your veins. The fact that your children are healthy. The fact that you got money coming in in a job. The fact that you have gas. The fact that, that you're in a building with AC. The fact that you live in a country where you can profess your faith and they're not going to persecute you. Suddenly you start realizing how... Yo, yo, check. Oh, well, we're not going to do that today.
Check, 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 check. Oh, that's the enemy right there. Hey, that's okay. That's okay. That's okay. Thank you, Jesus. So you start realizing the goodness of God, and by that goodness, you truly stay obedient. You know what happens with people that they go back to the world? They had an agenda with God. They say, God, I'll be saved, and I'll do what I have to do, and I'll walk this straight line, but if you do this for me. God, if you take care of these things right here, God, I'll serve you forever. Somebody will be in a really tight spot with the police or something and be like, God, if you could take me out of this situation, God, I'll repent for real. Or you'll have a sickness and be like, God, only if you heal me, I'll truly, truly give my life to God. See, what happens is instead of you loving God for who he is and finding your identity in God, you find your identity in the things that he did. Not for the one thing that if he doesn't do it, you don't love him no more. I want to let you guys know something. That God's not looking for that type of believer. He wants somebody who's sold out. He wants somebody who's going to love him no matter what situation they're in. He wants somebody that's going to love them through the storm. That they're going to praise him that no matter what they got going on, they're going to continue to have faith. That no matter what they got going on, they're going to continue to praise him because he's holy. Because he's, he's perfect. He's holy. He's holy. He's perfect. He's worthy of praise. He gives, he gives, he gives. And, and he doesn't expect nothing in return but your obedience. He wants you to love him. He wants you to get closer to him. And once you start getting closer to him, guess what? All those things will be added on to you. That healing, that breakthrough, whatever it is that you were looking for, it gets added on to you because he sees your heart. You know, Jesus didn't commit onto a lot of people. The Bible actually says that he's seen them saw their hearts and didn't commit onto them because he's seen their heart. Whew, I feel it. I feel it by the Holy Spirit right now that there, there's people in here that are wondering why God's not moving. They're like, God, what is it? What is it? Why, why aren't you showing up for me like, like how are you doing for other people? And I'm going to tell you why. It's because those people that God's coming through for, they don't ask for nothing from God. They say, Jesus, I love you, and you are more than enough, God. They praise him because he's holy. They praise him because he's righteous. They praise him because he's the Lord of Lord and the King of Kings, because he gave his only begotten son so that you may have life. It wasn't a guarantee that you would receive him. It wasn't a guarantee. He died in knowing that there might be some people who will still reject him. That even though he sat there and got, got whipped and lashed and even though they spat on him and, and told him that he's not who he said he was, he died for every single one of you in here and every person that might not accept him. That makes me think like, wow, that's love. The love that we were longing for, that love that we were looking for, he gave it to us. He gave his only begotten son so that all those that believe in him will not perish but have everlasting life. So I say that to encourage you today to love him. Love him. Don't, don't just come to him when you need something. Come to him because he's, he's God and he really came, he really lived, he really died and he really rose. I believe it so wholeheartedly that my entire life shows it. It's the fruit. He abides in me and I abide in him and the fruit of his love is in my life. Not because of what he can do, but because I love him. You have to love him. You, it can't be like, oh, I'm just going to go to church and see what happens. This is, the, this is the house of God where we come together. And we, and we get to edify each other. The word gets, gets spoken and, and demons come out and people get healed and that's great. But above the noise, above the, everything that's about to take place here, we must love him. Because that's truly abiding in him. See, you'll change when you love him. You won't change if you need a prayer request. You'll change if you truly seek him. You won't change if you're only waiting for a miracle to happen. I want to challenge you guys. This is the end of times. Y'all know that, right? Y'all know that the world is ending outside. Y'all know that the devil is running rampant. Y'all know this. You know how I know they're in the world? Because they love everything of the world and only hate Jesus. They only hate the name of Jesus. Why don't they don't like why don't they not like Buddha or Muhammad? Or why don't they like witchcraft? No, bruh. 
They only hate the name of Jesus. Oh, you're religious. Oh, don't, don't come over here with that Jesus talk. So you're telling me that, that, that God isn't really God if they're denying him? And his word says in the last days there will be a great fallout and there many will go back to seducing spirits and doctrine of devils and that's not what's going on outside right now? I want the body of Christ to wake up and to grab a fire that you've never had before in your life. To seek him today more than you've ever seek him in your entire life. The Bible also says that it's his, in the last days his spirit will be poured out over the youth and they will be on fire and they'll be outside casting out demons and healing the sick and preaching his name with power and conviction. Y'all gotta read the word. Y'all don't know what the Bible says? The Bible says that all that believe him, these signs will follow and greater. So we're gonna do everything Jesus did and greater and greater and greater. Not for us, not for, not for the social media, but for him because we love him. And he sent us on a mission. You can think this is a fairy tale if you want, but you'll see real closely if you really look, there's two sides. Pick a side. You decide on who you gonna fight for. So let's pray. Let's pray. I'm going to pray that the Holy Spirit fills you. I'm going to pray that you get a fire tonight. A fire that you're going to seek him no matter what you go through. That you're going to get a fire tonight. A love for him. That's what I'm going to pray for. A love. That you love him no matter what you're facing. And you'll see that the minute that your heart switches from that do something for me God to I love you God. You'll see everything move out your way. And that path becomes straight. And everything that he has for you will be placed in front of you. And anything that you need he will supply because you love him. Because you love him. Everybody bow your heads. Father God, in the name of Jesus, Lord, thank you, Father. Thank you, Father God, for you are holy. Thank you, Father God, for you are the King of kings. You are the Lord of lords. You are the Alpha. You are the Omega, Father God. You are who you say you are. You are a man of your word, God. Thank you, Father God, for your goodness. The goodness that brings us to repentance. The goodness, Father God, that keeps us obedient because we love you, God. I love you, Jesus. I love you, Jesus. Everybody say it. I love you, Jesus. I love you, Jesus. I love you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Father God, for the miracles that are going to break out tonight. Thank you, Father God, for the healing that's going to break out tonight. Thank you, Father God, for the answered prayers for those that love you, that everything works together for the greater good for those that love him. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Father God. Give him a fire, a desire to seek you more every single day. In Jesus' name, amen. Give him some love. Give him some love. I want to, y'all ready to worship? Y'all ready? Y'all ready? All right, so help me welcome up Pastor Carlene and the worship team.
to shake some things off of y'all tonight. I come out here and I feel, I don't feel loose. I feel a little tight. People holding their hands. People are like, what's going on? When you worship the Lord, when you come into his sanctuary, you got to be ready to receive what he wants to give you. So you got to let loose. If you came in here tonight trying to figure out if God is real, I'm here to tell you right now so you don't get disappointed. He's very real. Just so you don't get disappointed. But right now, before we start worship, so I'm not up here worshiping with the worship team and the instrumentalists so that you guys can be filled with the spirit. I need you to shake off everything that you came in here with. Shake it off. Shake it off. You see, like my brother right there is jumping up and down. Everybody jump up and down. Shake it off. Shake it off. Everybody should be moving in this sanctuary. Shake off every doubt. Shake off every fear. Shake off every anxiety. Shake off depression. Shake off every single thing that's not of God. Shake it off. Shake it off. Shake it off. Shake every single thing. Every thought that's not of God. Take it captive and throw it up to the ground. Shake it off right now. I'm not going to stop until I see everybody shaking it off. People are still standing around. We got to do this in one accord tonight. Come on. As a matter of fact, everybody start clapping. Start clapping. Clap. 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 Come on. Louder. Louder. So you see that thing that's pressing on your mind, whatever it is, whether it's a marriage issue, whether it's a financial issue, whether it's a you need deliverance or healing, you see that thing that's pressing on your mind, it's so easy for it to leave as long as you rejoice in the Lord, because the joy of the Lord is our strength, and as long as you rejoice in Him, everything else don't matter, because He overcame the world so that we too can overcome the world. He said, let not, let, let not our hearts be troubled, because I overcame the world, so that you can overcome it too. So when you start clapping, I need you to imagine that same thing that's right there on your mind is falling off. So if you really want to get set free, if you really want to be healed, if you really want to be filled with the spirit of the living God, you'll actually start moving and not stand like this pridefully. You ready? Do it again. Clap. 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 Jump. Jump. 
church and he loves to have fun. He loves to have fun when it comes to healing, deliverance, when it comes to prophesying, when it comes to all those things. But most importantly, he loves to rejoice. He likes to dwell in a vessel, but he likes to dwell in a vessel that has joy. That's what he wants. So tonight, we're going to rejoice with the Lord.
yourself right now. But for you to be able to feel that he's manifesting himself, you have to rejoice in the song as well. So as you're singing this, I need you to dance like this that we practiced earlier. You ready? ¡Viva! Sí, 
se siente su gloria en este lugar algo grande va a pasar se activa lo sobrenatural y a Say 
is a spirit of prophecy. Come on. If he can do it for me, he can do it for you. That means look at your neighbor, look at your neighbor and say, if he can do it for me, he, he can, can do, do it for you. you. If he can do it for me, he can do it for you. Come on, let it know. If he can do, do it for me, he can do it for you. He can do it for me. He can do it for you. If he did it for me, he can do it for you. If he did it for me, he can do it for you. If he did it for me, he can do it for you. If he did it for me, he can do it for you. If he said the money of Jesus is the third of prophecy, that means if he do it for another, he can do it for me. That means if he do it for another, he can do it again. That means if he do it for another, he can do it again. That means if he do it for another, he can do it again. That means if he do it for another. He could do it again. That means if he do it for another, he could do it again. That means if he do it for another, he could do it again. That means if he do it for another one, he could do it again. So get up, get up, get up, get up out of that grave. Get up, get up, get up, get up out of that grave. Get up, get up, get up, get up out of that grave. Get up, get up, get up, get up out of that grave.
worship Jesus. Keep it's all about Jesus. Keep up, keep up, keep up. Come on. Keep up. It's all about Jesus. Keep up, keep up, keep up. It's all about Jesus. Keep up. Come on. It's all about Jesus. It's all about Jesus. It's all about Jesus. The Holy Ghost said, now that's what I'm talking about. The Holy Ghost said, it's a Tuesday, but I got the cry going up on a Tuesday. It's a Holy Ghost party. Hold on, hold on, y'all don't know about that? I'm gonna make a remix. I'll make a remix. What's the remix? I got the cry going up on a Tuesday.
as I'm worshiping the Lord, and I hear this, I hear this for you guys. There's so many angels in here, right? And they're all worshiping with us. And then the Lord said, people come to my house and they don't receive their blessing because they're not worshiping me. And then I'm like, Lord, what does that mean? And the Lord said, you know how when you, you reap what you sow, when you sow, you reap, right? You sow in worship as well. If you're not sowing in true worship and spirit and truth, and you're looking at them, people here, and I'm not talking about with your physical eyes only. I'm talking about in the spirit. Your heart and your mind needs to be postured towards the Lord, towards heaven. And when you worship God in spirit and truth, you receive blessings that you don't even know you need. A blessing means favor. Don't you want favor in your situation? So don't come to the house of God and leave empty handed. He has a blessing for you. You came here for a reason. You came to the house of your father. He's a good father. He wants to bless you. Bless him so he can bless you. Amen. Worship the Lord in spirit and truth. Come on. You are the of it all. For from you are all things, and to you are all things. You deserve the glory. Make it personal. your heart see the Father who is in heaven and let him bring down heaven Father we ask you to let heaven come
everybody right now. Give Jesus the loudest shout of praise. The loudest shout of praise. Praise his holy name. Jump up and down. Jump up and down if your chains are broken. Jump up and down if you've been delivered and healed. Jump up and down if you've been forgiven. Jump up and down if you know he's Lord. Because he's in the building. He's here right now. Jump up and down if you love Jesus. Scream his name. Jesus. 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 Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Highest praise. Ah, the Lord is so good. Everyone may be seated in the fire of the Holy Spirit. His fire is here right now. How many of y'all feel his presence? How many of y'all feel his fire? His power? I'm telling you, the Lord is good. He's so good and he's so in control. If we draw near to him, he draws near to us. Amen. He already came. Christ already came and drew near to us. Now it's our job to draw near to him in every situation. You see, we look for opportunities in this physical realm to handle our issues and problems. And take, instead of taking it to the throne room of grace. And that's when you have an issue. He'll never let you love the world more than him. If you're his son or his daughter. So what he'll do is he'll let you go through your own ways. Exhaust all options. And then realize that the problem was solved through him. Prayer, worship, praise. You see, as you grow in Christ, the less you try to figure it out. The less you realize, the more you realize that you don't know anything, the less you try to figure it out. And you say, Jesus, I don't know what's going on and I'm not trying to figure it out in my mind. You know when you try to analyt analytically calculate things in your mind with every situation, that's doubt. You see, you have something called faith, doubt, and unbelief. Faith is what? The substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things unseen, right? So you don't know how it's going to happen. But you just put all your trust in Him. You see, even faith and trust is different. Trust is when you have testimonial proof that you could go back and meditate on to know that he's going to come through in this situation which makes you trust him just like if I have a friend and he says I'm going to pick you up every day at 8 a.m. if he comes every day at 8 a.m. for two months I trust him now so when he doesn't it's weird to me right that's trust but faith is just completely letting go and saying God you're in control and rejoicing and worshiping and praising his holy name until the physical manifestation of what you prayed for happens in front of your face. That's called a Kairos moment. Everyone say Kairos. You see, God is outside of what? Time and space. So the way we think is not the way he thinks. The way we move is not the way he moves. You want to get things done? You pray. Using his word. And it will never return to him void. You start realizing that prayer is more important than your own thoughts. Catch this. If his thoughts are not our thoughts, why do we always keep thinking? Instead of relying on his thoughts, which is in his word. If we just rely on his thoughts, cancel out our thoughts, and stay on that path, our mind becomes like him. And he proves that the whole time, that's all we needed to do. And you become dead to yourself. And then it becomes less of you and more of him. 
the more he reveals himself to you the less you care about yourself but he will not reveal himself more and more to you unless you seek him people come to the church building looking for him to do something for them not with a heart of seeking but with a heart of pride God if you're real then you do something show me then that's pride but when you come broken you say Lord I need you I need you I need you to show up in my life right now because I want to believe more I want to have faith I want to let go so father I come before you and you do whatever you want and you come to this church house you come to prayer you go to prayer in the secret place with that with that with that brokenness everyone say brokenness right you cannot be who you're called to be in Christ unless you die and you break and the breaking never stops God will break you more and more and more so get used to it amen that's how that oil flows you can't have the, the, the oil unless you you pay for it it's a cost that comes with it do you want to pay that cost I always talk about this man God will speed you up depending on how how much you're willing to take <laughs> only you your free will would allow it to happen at a fast rate but you have to be able to die a lot daily all the time every situation is a time to die to yourself even going to the to get food and standing in line hungry wanting it now but somebody else behind you is hungry as well so you tell them to skip you and you pay for their food you die to yourself having money saved up that you want to spend on a vacation but instead giving it to your friend your brother or sister in Christ because they need it and skipping that vacation that's dying right not wanting to pray not wanting to read but doing it because you love Jesus and you're not going to let your emotions override your relationship with the almighty God God is looking to see who sacrifices sacrifices are uncomfortable every single time it's not a sacrifice unless it hurts I'm going to say it again it's not a sacrifice unless it hurts you and you feel like it's something you don't want to give up it could be you not getting angry in a time where your flesh rises up it could be putting down the pornography even though you want to watch it so bad yes nobody else is watching you but in the spirit there are many beings watching you but just saying you know what I'm done because I fear God you see what I'm saying the fear of the Lord is the first step to wisdom <laughs> it's just the first step <laughs> so if you don't have the fear of the Lord you can't even pass step one and catch this the Bible says Solomon asked for what God gave him wisdom and what came with it prosperity some people wonder why they're broke they don't fear God they don't even have step one done I'm being real I'm just being honest do you fear God ask yourself it's the situations where nobody's watching where nobody can know he wants those intimate times he wants to take your faith and put it through some fire are you willing to are you willing to die and say Lord I know you're watching Lord I want to please you with my faith and pass those tests everyone say tests that's what they are you're being tested the school of the spirit isn't it beautiful bro life in Christ is not boring I'm telling you it's more real than in the world but some people don't even see they don't even know they don't even have the ability to comprehend what a life in Christ means is because you haven't given them that first step you haven't given them that first sacrifice so everyone say sacrifice amen today we're gonna talk about a spirit that everybody in this building including myself has dealt with 
that attacks all of us constantly and no one can beat this spirit but God amen Leviathan Woo! it's going to be a good teaching a lot of, a lot of deliverance is going to break it out, break out. Let's, let's give it up for Jesus so we just got back from Houston, Texas it was powerful it was powerful Houston, Texas was amazing many souls got saved we honestly didn't even count there was hundreds of people um, the Lord moved mightily the Holy Spirit was thick there were so many people that the, the AC they had put it all the way down wasn't even enough it was hot the paint started coming off the walls and I mean the line was all the way to the highway outside and Texas heat over 100 degrees people didn't care that's how hungry people were for Jesus and people received their breakthrough people we had somebody email us today a brother who got he got healed from cancer amen and he wants to fly out the ministry to their church a big mega church to for deliverance they want they want me to teach on deliverance a young man of God raised in the church and everything got the, got healed a lot of people got healed prophecy moved deliverance to be honest, the same thing y'all see every service here. We just brought it to Houston. And we had a lot more time. It was from like, I think it was from 11 to, to 5. So, uh, about the same time here. Amen. So who came from out of the state? Who came from out of the state? Wow. Where'd you come from? Georgia. Son, right? I prophesied you come here. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord. God did that for you, man. Proud of you, though. Proud of you, bro. Where'd you come from? Cali? Oh, yeah. oh, wow. What part of Cali? Montclair. Okay. And you guys flew out here for vacation or for here? For vacation. And she came to stop by and see what's up. Amen. Welcome, welcome. Where y'all from? Miami? Y'all drove up from Miami? Praise God. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Who else? Where y'all from? Missouri. Y'all came for vacation too? For, for the rock for Jesus amen amen where'd y'all come from Kakalaki. North Kakalaki hey. <laughs> welcome <laughs> welcome anybody else that's it cool it's gonna be an intimate beautiful uh, Tuesday service a lot of deliverance it's gonna be good tonight y'all ready for this you know what's crazy is uh it's like when I meet people, when I meet people in different areas or just new people, I can see in the eyes like people are just like thinking I'm going to like give them a prophetic word. <laughs> I'm just trying to say hi. <laughs> I can see it. He's looking at me. Oh, shoot. I'm like, man. Yeah, the Houston revival was pretty crazy. The, the, the spirit of prophecy, Jesus started moving and, I was, and the Lord was telling me, go against fornication. Who saw it? Yeah, people, the like couples left the, they left the revival because they didn't like what I said. I had to be obedient to the Lord. I even told a couple out by, by, in love, but the truth, that there was a Jezebel-Ahab combination. And she didn't like that. And the guy actually said it was confirmation. Probably saved his life. God loves them both, though. Um, yeah, it was beautiful, man. A lot of things, a lot of breakthrough. A lot of people uh, received what they needed. And the team came out. They flew out. It was beautiful. I, I had a lot of help because I needed it. And yeah, man, we're going back. We're going to Dallas at the end of August. So if you haven't already, get your tickets. We're going to Dallas. Who's from Texas? Anybody? Nobody? Yeah, we're going to Dallas. Also, the 4th, 5th, and 6th of this month, I mean, next month and next weekend, we have the revival here in Orlando, or Apopka. Who's coming? Amen. Okay, for who, who needs to get a ticket that hasn't got a ticket? Make sure you go on Eventbrite and get a ticket, Okay. Because the seats are filling up quick, it's gonna, we're going to have to probably add, extend all the rows, and there'll probably be people standing up. So make sure you guys get tickets and come on time. That way you can get a seat. It's going to be powerful. Three days, um, day one and day two, I'm going to be teaching on evangelism and obviously revival. And Sunday will be a Remnant Revival Outreach Center International Barbecue. If you've completed the discipleship course. And I know, I know the teachable's down right now, 
but we've, we've been emailing them, we've been staying on top of them. We just gotta wait, but if you've completed the course, by next weekend, you can come join us. We're gonna cook up some, some barbecue, it's gonna be fun, fellowship, play basketball, football, whatever, meet and greet. You guys can meet the, uh, the leadership, amen? amen? So make sure you take the discipleship course. Who's taking it right now? And is it working? No, I'm saying like, is it actually working like you're able to take it? You don't know? No? You finished it? So I was thinking, maybe, maybe I guess if you already signed up, it's, I, I don't know, man, teachable, man, robbing us. It's all good. Keep us in prayer. Finish the discipleship course, okay, guys? If you haven't already, here, sign up. All right, welcome to The Rock. Amen. The Remnant Revival Outreach Center where Jesus is our rock. We're going to record everything. If you don't want to be recorded, this probably isn't the place for you. We shine our light next. Stay connected. Social media. Get plugged in. Next. Church Center app. Everybody has it. If you want to get a tax return at the end of the year, give through the app. A lot smarter. Next. Again, discipleship course. Who, who needs to take it? Take a picture if you need to. Or you can go on my social media and you'll find it in the link tree. Outreach. Man, y'all got to come join us for, with Outreach. We got Pastor Joel over there. I give it up to Pastor Joel. Y'all can't see him. Hey, stand up. Come over here. Come over here, Pastor. Come here, Pastor. Him and Pastor Benji are leading it Mondays and Thursdays. He leads Mondays. Amen. Tell them, tell them briefly, Pastor, what you saw this, this four-day weekend. <laughs> uh, man, uh, a lot of people came to Jesus uh, and brokenness, man. A lot of people wanted Jesus. Um, a lot of people wasn't, weren't expecting what they got. Um, a lot of uh, deliverance. Um, a lot of things got exposed that they didn't know that they were dealing with that they needed to release. Um, sometimes we, we do need a, a mirror, uh, which is us. And when that is exposed, receive it like honey. Um, yeah, man, what, what really touched my heart this weekend is just, you know, people just coming to Jesus, the, the authentic, authentic, an authentic way of brokenness. Um, uh, yeah. Amen. Amen. It was powerful. And even... um. Like, before the revival, we were seeing miracles at the mall. I mean, like, too many. Like, I, I said it in Houston, but my, my best friend I grew up with, you know, he's a, he's a mechanical engineer. He lives in Houston now. He's been living there for a while. And um, I texted him. I told, I told Pastor Joel when we got off the plane. I was like, bro, I'm going to text Fred, man. And then I, he, he answered, but then he just, put, like, let, like, ghosted me. Just left me on Reddit. And he has my social media, so he sees me. So a few days go by, we're on the way to the conference where I'm preaching at, and I'm about to walk up these escalators, and guess who we see? Fred with his wife, and they're like, eyes wide open, convicted, like, oh, hey, bro. Like, yeah, man. And you know, he's coming out, he's, he's Catholic, so I'm trying to get him out of that, you know what I'm saying? And he, he said it, he was like, man, I don't know what, to, I have to go to the revival. So Catholics came to the revival, and. Yeah, it was good. They saw what they needed to see. It was good, and it was, it was just miraculous. Houston's huge. What are the chances that he was walking by at that exact moment? Leaving a yoga studio. Because he had the yoga mat, right? I believe it was a yoga studio. Maybe it wasn't. I don't know. But they had the yoga mats. They looked like they did some yoga. But because um, I used to do it. But yeah, man, he came out. It was just crazy. His eyes were wide open. He's like, I wasn't even supposed to be here, bro. This is crazy. Like, yeah, I told you God is real, man. And he came, front row seats. My cousin, right, my blood cousin, I reconciled with him. Him and my father used to actually, I mean, my dad and his dad used to have a lot of division in the family. So, you know, and me and him used to sell drugs in the world together. And I used to, I used to send him drugs to sell in Houston. And we kind of had a falling out because he owed me money, but I never held it against him. I said, I told him to keep the money, but he always felt some type of way. Well, we reconciled and he cried like a baby. You actually baptized him, right? Pastor Joy actually baptized him. That was powerful. There's just a lot of reconciliation. How the Lord's moving is just crazy, man. Like, it's just, we were feeling like we were floating, right? Like, we weren't even like 
in this world, like everything was so divine. Everything, like it was like God was in front of us going, choo, 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 in every situation, like in the restaurant and at the mall, like he, like we're like, bro, what's going? We went for the, we went for the run, like we're just running, and then we, I was like, I stop at this bench real quick. We we're getting a workout. We look at the bench and it says Jesus. I'm like, man, what the? He's everywhere. <laughs> it was crazy. A lot of a lot of a lot of encounters. You guys are gonna see the evangelism videos a lot. We I spoke to a we what was it a, a married lesbian couple. They got touched by God and everything. I prayed for them, words of knowledge and everything. They actually received, they, they, they're coming to the church. They're coming to the church. They're flying in to Orlando, I think, next weekend. So I think that was pretty cool. It was, it was a lot. It was a lot. Y'all, y'all will see the vlog. Amen? Amen. 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 Thank you, Pastor. So what else? Um, yeah, outreach. Make sure you come. Who wants to learn how to evangelize? Man, come. Anybody can come. Mondays and Thursdays. Don't miss it. We're an outreach center. So that's what our DNA is. We go reach the lost. Everybody's supposed to evangelize, man. The Bible says do the works of an evangelist. Jesus said what? Go preach the gospel to all nations, right? So it doesn't, you don't have to be an ordained evangelist. You don't have to be a seasoned 10-year evangelist. The minute you're saved, you can give people your gospel, the gospel, and the testimo- your testimony. If you don't know the gospel, how did you get saved? You know what I'm saying? And I actually preached the gospel very thoroughly at the Houston Revival, and that's why so many people got saved. Because there was a spirit of religion over that city. Bad. Like, people, like, smoking cigarettes, getting drunk. Like, I'm saved. Yeah, man, I was that, like, religion. Like, can't tell them nothing. So we, we, we broke that, that spirit over that, that building. And a lot of people got, like, really gave their life to Christ. Like, dang, I was not saved. Yep, you were not. And it was good. And they got filled with the Holy Ghost. Pastor Joel actually told me a, a guy came up to him and was like, I don't believe that you can speak in tongues without an interpreter. And he was like, he was like, right, right? He, said, he was like, so, so, so if, if, just tell me about it. He, you gave him like a little revelation quickly. And he was like, okay, pray for me. He said, but he got filled with the Holy Ghost. Yeah, real quick. Got, he's coming here? Amen. Another guy who couldn't, who could, he was in a wheelchair. I was sick. Remember that guy? He came up, got healed, all that, and started worshiping. Worshiper. That was powerful. It was a great, it was a great revival. So, amen. Come to the one next weekend. Don't want to miss it. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. All right, let's get into this word. Let's get into this word. Um, wait. Yep, services. Don't miss it. Tuesdays and Saturdays. Next. Support in the back. We got merch back there, all that. You guys, y'all can go check it out. And please silence your cell phones. How many people we got on live right now? A thousand two hundred? Amen. We about to get it in. Y'all gonna get delivered too. That's a good message. The Bible says you will be delivered through knowledge. Y'all know that, right? It's in the book of Proverbs. That knowledge will deliver you. People say, well, knowledge puffs up and love edifies. Yes. If you have a bunch of knowledge with no love, Obviously, you'll be, you're in pride. But knowledge is important because God's people die for lack of it. So you want to seek knowledge, amen? amen? With some love. All right. Leviathan. Man, oh man. Leviathan is the king of pride. I want everyone to pull out their, their Bible. You can pull out your phone if you want to. Just make sure you're not scrolling on social media. Job chapter 41. We're going to go through the whole chapter, or most of it. The book of Job chapter 41. Just Father, in the name of Jesus, I pray that you speak through me. Holy Spirit, do what you do. Transform, convict. I pray deliverance breaks out, healing for your glory. Souls get saved. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, so... Who's ever had a dream of a crocodile? Crocodile in your dreams. That's the spirit of Leviathan. When you have dreams of crocodiles coming at you or biting you, or you trying to walk past them in water, you're fighting pride. That's the Lord showing you that you're fighting pride. Also, Leviathan is also considered a dragon. I'm going to read through Job 41 to prove it. 
but a dragon. Who's ever had a dream of a dragon chasing them or something like that? Yep, that's, that's, that's that Leviathan spirit. So let's start in verse 1. Can you draw out Leviathan with a hook or snare his tongue with a line which you lower? Can you put a reed through his nose or pierce his jaw with a hook? Who uses hooks? Fishermen, right? To get big sharks and fish. This verse is implying that we cannot beat Leviathan with human abilities. We can't get Leviathan out. Leviathan is too powerful. In our own strength, we cannot beat Leviathan. Everyone in here has dealt with, pri with pride, including myself. Look at verse 3. Will he make many supplications to you? Which means requests. Will he speak softly to you? Look, pride has a very arrogant way of showing you who's boss. You know how you know you're dealing with pride? Because you lose it too quick and too frequently. No self-control. Get angry way too quick. In situations, you hear Leviathan whisper, they're wrong. Yell at them. That's righteous anger. Who's ever heard that whisper? That's righteous anger. Yes, curse them out. Punch them in the mouth. That, that's what Jesus would do. That's a soft whisper. That's a petition, a request. That's Leviathan finessing you. When you know the word of God, you know that that's not true. The Bible says love is what? Patient, kind. You see what I'm saying? Yes, you don't rejoice in evil. Like when there's evil, you, don't, you, you, you rejoice in truth. But it doesn't mean that you curse somebody out or you yell at somebody because you got road rage. Road rage is pride. You're dealing with the spirit of Leviathan. You see what I'm saying? You know when you black out, you have those blackout moments? Or you just can't control yourself? Who deals with that regularly? Y'all gonna get some deliverance tonight. Pride has a very, very arrogant way of showing you who is boss. Look at verse 4. Will he make a covenant with you? Does this spirit Leviathan, when he's inside of you, does he, does he say, you know what, I'll just come out, you know, I'll come out now because I, you know, I, I want to leave you alone or... Or if you be quiet, I'll be quiet. Let me just chill. No, Leviathan tries to control you. Leviathan is not a nice spirit. Leviathan doesn't want to be your friend. Leviathan wants to, wants to put you down as his servant. Look at this. Will you take him as a servant forever? Leviathan wants to enslave you. How many people have ever got angry, blacked out, did something stupid, and you hated it? Why did I do this? And you repeatedly do it like, bro, what's wrong with me? You need deliverance from a Leviathan spirit. The spirit of pride is not there to serve you. You will serve the spirit of pride. You will do what the spirit says. Look at verse 5. You will play with him as with a bird. Or will you leash him for your maidens? Will your companions make a banquet of him? Will they apportion him among the merchants? Can you fill his skin with harpoons or his head with fishing spears? Lay your hand on him. Remember the battle and never do it again. Pride is not an easy spirit to be delivered from. It will put up a fuss and a fight. Through him, many other spirits will enter. Leviathan is a master spirit. Everyone say master spirit. So is Jezebel, so is Python. And the spirit of rejection too. Master spirits will enter you and bring an entire operation with them. Because if you're dealing with lust, if you're dealing with doubt, if you're dealing with anger, if you're dealing with fornication, these are spirits that are covering the master spirit. This, the master spirit is the one that runs the whole operation. That's why you have to bind the strong man. If you bind the strong man and cast it out, everything comes out a lot easier. The residue. Makes sense. Binding means tying up. When you go into somebody's house to rob them, this is, where, this is where Jesus gave a parable. Before you go rob the house, you have to bind up, tie up the house owner. Right? You ever see those movies when the robbers come in, they tie them up, put them on a chair? Yes, that's binding. It's the same thing when you're casting out a demon. Demons like to do what? Travel through the body. 
You ever see someone get delivered from a Leviathan? You need to bind that demon. Because that spirit starts to move. They're like, oh, my arm. Oh, my leg. It starts to move. That's why, that's why y'all hear me say, I bind that spirit. I paralyze it in the name of Jesus Christ. And it stops moving. If you ever see people start like going crazy too much, like stop manifesting in the name of Jesus Christ. They do that to cause a show and fall on the ground and make you think that the demon came out of them. It happened out in um, Houston. I had to tell someone, stop manifesting, like the, the spirit, stop manifesting. And it was causing this, I think it was a woman, right? It was a woman that was, I think it was a woman who was going crazy. And I was like, stop manifesting in the name of Jesus Christ. So when it comes to certain spirits, you have to bind them, if not all of them. Look at this, verse nine. Indeed, any hope of overcoming his, him is false. I'm gonna say it again. Any hope of overcoming Leviathan is false. So what does that mean? That we can't beat him? In our own hum human ability, we cannot. We literally need Jesus Christ. We need God. It's like, you ever hear people say, I'm going to humble myself. You can't humble yourself in your own strength. I'm going to be humble today. Not possible. I hear people, oh, like, you know, the self-help books, be, 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 be humble, be, be meek. You know, the self-help books in the world, they tell you to do that, but you, you'll, you'll last a week a few days, a few hours, and then you'll break again. You can't do it in your own strength. You need the presence of the Lord. Everyone say the presence of God. That's why seeking him every day is important. Because Leviathan is looking to destroy you. Leviathan wants to keep you bound. You cannot, I'm going to say this again, you cannot be used by God in pride. What got Satan cast out of heaven? God hates pride because pride is saying that you are better than God, if not equal to him. It's saying you don't need him. I said it earlier. As you grow in the faith, you realize you need him more than before. And you know nothing. You stop trying to think and you just focus on him, his word, prayer, worship. That's why I said I fight in worship. I don't try to fight in my own strength anymore. Every time I tried to fight in my own strength, I fell. You think you got it. The Leviathan spirit is real sneaky. Make you think you got it and drop you. Wants to condemn you. Wants to make you give up and go back to the world. The only way you can fight Leviathan is with God. God has to fight him for you. Shall, shall one not be overwhelmed at the sight of him? Overwhelmed means he's much bigger than us. There's no way to overcome him without God. Ten, no one is so fierce that he would dare stir him up. Who then is able to stand against me? Tonight, you know we're going to stir up. We're going to stir up that Leviathan spirit and cast that devil out. Amen. Amen. Many people are going to get delivered tonight. Give it up for Jesus. You know what I noticed, Pastor Joel? In Houston, right? It's the Bible Belt. There's a lot of Christians. You notice every time I would say something, they'd be like clapping real quick. Like, I was like, man, this feels better. Like, they're more engaged. Orlando, wake up. Stay with me. They were clapping too much where I had to like, yo, yo, stop. Right? It's, so what does clapping mean? In Jewish culture, did y'all know clapping means coming in agreement? It comes from Jewish culture, Jewish tradition. When you clap, it means you come in agreement. So when I give a word, led by the Spirit, and you come in agreement, it, there's power, unity, amen? amen. <laughs> so verses 1 through 34 are all about the characteristics of Leviathan, but I'm about to read, verse 11 changes, it shifts. It's to highlight something important, it's almost like the author shouldn't have put this verse here, maybe at the end. This verse is sandwiched in between and it's very important. Look, verse 11. Who has preceded me that I should pay him? Everything under heaven is mine. So it's like God is describing Leviathan and he shifts and he says, but don't forget, it might, be, it might look impossible to overcome him, but everything under heaven is mine. Depend on me. That's what God is saying. I can beat him. That's what God is saying. God can beat Leviathan and every other, every other demon. That's why people that look for deliverance ministers more than they look for God, God, they, won't, they, they will never get delivered. I had to tell a girl in Houston, a young girl, 
She was manifesting and like, and like running away. And I was like, stop. I was like, do you seek a lot of deliverance all the time? I said, do you read your word and pray? I said, so your relationship with God is through people laying hands on you and trying to cast demons out? And I said, we love you. And she started breaking and crying. And my, me and my wife gave her a hug. She said, you're loved by God. Do you know how much God loves you? Because a lot of people go through so much abuse that they think the only way they can receive love is from people yelling at them. You see what I'm saying? It's, the, it's like deliverance junkies. They just want to be yelled at. Like they want it, they, it's like they get, they, they, it makes them feel like, okay, I'm doing something right. But that's not how our father wants us to look at him, man. Like Deacon Carlos said earlier, it's about loving Jesus. We have to fall in love with our heavenly father. Do y'all know how much he loves you? For real. And I'm not just saying, you know how people say, God loves you, and they just say it to say it. He created you. We come from heaven. We were all spirits in heaven together. We came here on a mission. We have a purpose here on this earth. We have to get over the little small humps, the beginning stage, get over that honeymoon plateau and start walking in the purpose that God actually ordained for us in heaven. What else is, what? You know, yes, amen. What else do we have, what else, what else matters, man? Think about it. What, what else matters? This world sucks, man. It does. Everyone say this world sucks. Amen. It's a lot of clapping now. Amen. <laughs> so nothing is impossible without God. I mean, with nothing is, okay. I wanted to remind us that nothing is impossible and that he is God. Amen. Verse 12. I will not conceal his limbs, his mighty power, or his gracious proportions. He can remove his outer court. I mean, who can remove his outer court? Who can approach him with a double brittle? Who can open the doors of his face with his terrible teeth all around? His rows of scales are his pride shut up tightly as with a seal. One is so near another that no air can come between them. They are joined one to another. They stick together and cannot be parted. Man, that's a dirty, dirty serpent. His characteristics. God is explaining like this is a, this is a wicked beast. So... Verses 18 through 21, I'm going to prove that Leviathan is a dragon. Look, his sneezing flash forth like light, right? And his, his eyes are like the eyelids of the morning. Other translations say red. Out of his mouth go burning lights. Sparks of fire shoot out. Smoke goes out of his nostrils as from a boiling pot and burning rushes. How many people ever said, my blood is boiling, I'm so, I'm so angry? I'm infuriated right now. I'm so hot. I'm hot, right? I'm hot right now. You know that means that Leviathan is having his way with you, right? That's Leviathan. You just, I'm boiling right now, man. That's Leviathan. That's pride coming at you. That's not normal. You're not supposed to, there's no, there's no righteousness in being hot and angry and, 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 and blasting out something you don't want to do. That's the opposite of God. That's, that's pride, that's, that's anger, that's murder. That's not God. And you can feel it in your, man, you can feel it. When the violent thing comes at you, how many people have been through that situation with people? Let me tell you something. God will, when you start praying and getting closer to God, God begins to reveal you to you through situations. That's how he answers your prayers. When you're up for promotion, you go through testing. And it's going to be the people closest to you. It's going to be the people you never thought would do something to you. Something stupid, like not picking you up at the right time, not getting you the coffee or the, the bacon, egg, and cheese that, they, that you paid for. And you hungry at work. And then you get hot. What you going to do? Humble yourself or give in to that, give in to that covenant. Give in to that petition, that supplication that Leviathan is, is Leviathan is sitting there like, Look, he's going to get mad. She's going to get mad. But when you stay, you stop. You can get angry, but do not sin. And you say, no. It's okay. It's all good. You win. <laughs> Test passed. I can literally hear angels tell me sometimes, Test passed. Or what? Yeah. They take notes and they bring it to heaven. Did y'all know that? They're watching us. 
Our angels are watching us. They're, God is allowing these tests. But if you can't get through this, if you're going through the same test and you keep failing and you keep failing, you're going to stay right there. You don't want to be that person that's staying at the same grade level, man. You want to you graduate, right? Go to middle school, right? High school, right? amen. And you know those kids that are really smart, graduating in college at like 15? That could be you. It's called fast track. And God is doing that in this last hour. It's been prophesied too many times. I have a friend back in 2012. He's a prophet. He literally told me. He said, bro, back in 2012, God took me into a trance and I encountered an angel. And it was an angel. He described the angel like this miraculous angel. He's like, and this angel told me that he was going to fast track, that the fast track was coming because Satan's fast tracking his people too. Satan's moving quick, so God will never let Satan beat him. So just like Satan's trying to train people up in the witchcraft and, the, and all that stuff, think about it, the internet. Kids can go online and learn how to sell drugs and do witchcraft from TikTok. So God's doing the same thing, but even quicker. So in this last hour, if you're obedient to God and you seek him, he will move you quick. You'll start passing people, and I don't mean it in a competitive way. I mean it in from faith to faith and glory to glory. You'll see God start God's using you more than people who've been saved 25, 30 years in the church pastors, and they're looking at you like, what is going on? How is this happening? And it's because you have, to, you have to keep your, your heart pure and seek God. He's looking for those who worship him in spirit and truth, and not just when you're singing in a, in a church building, but also when you're in the streets. Also, when you're at work, Paola, and you're at the front desk and people piss you off and you're tired, what you gonna do? You gonna be like, yeah. like the little attitude back in the day, you know how we used to do back in the day? But I know you're not like that, you're very loving, so what you, you love them more. You might go to the back and cry, but you didn't sin. You didn't fall, Leviathan didn't beat you. Y'all know how many times I have to go to a closet or a bathroom and cry? I'm a grown man. I'll be in situations where it's so, I get so hot, I don't sin. But I have to separate myself and go cry and release it because this feeling won't go away. Y'all know what I'm talking about. It feels like that's a demon wrestling with you. Did y'all know that? That's how we wrestle. Not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, powers, rules, right? So when you start feeling, you have to be very sensitive to your emotions. Very sensitive to your feelings. The presence of God is what? Peaceful, joyful, love. You feel amazing when you're feeling something that's the opposite of that. That's not God. We are in Orlando where there's a bunch of witchcraft and Jezebel and Leviathan everywhere. So when you're walking out downtown at the Publix, whatever, wherever you're at, there's atmospheres that are extremely demonic and you cannot see what's going on. And you're walking into an atmosphere where there's a whole bunch of demons and you can't see them. But they see you and they're going to start shooting darts at you. Setting up situations for you to fail. Every time I walk somewhere, and if you ever go evangelize with me, you'll see this. I know that when the setups from the enemy start happening, a divine appointment is about to happen. I just keep myself cool. Just wait. Okay. Yep. All right. I'm talking about crazy stuff. Going to, going to the Walmart to evangelize, get, get into the parking lot, someone, bah, bah, wanna piss me off, right? It's all good. My fault, you can take the parking spot, go ahead. We start walking in, people, they start grilling you. Yeah, who, who, who deals with that as a Christian? I'm talking about like, they start like, sizing you up. I'll give you guys, the, you, you want the best formula for that? This is what I do. Right? I, I told Pastor Joel this, because he was like, bro, they keep, right? He was like, bro, they be grilling me, bro. And I'm like, I'm like, okay, this is what you do. Look, this, I'm going to act it out. Grill, grill me. He starts grilling me. This is what I'm going to do. How you doing, man? <laughs> what's up, bro? I wild out. I literally wild out. And I'd be like, what's up? They, they, uh, yeah. They start tweaking. They start manifesting. <laughs> I'm dead serious. Because you feel it, though. Yes. You just be, ch I'm just walking to the gym. It's about to have a great workout. I'm just like, uh, uh, how you doing? That's a punt, and I'm a, and I'm a haymaker him, that demon. I'm dead serious. It's love. And you'll see the person go from Mr. Gangster to Mr. Softy real quick. I've seen people break, say, what's up? I pray for them, bawling, crying, going through a whole bunch of issues, divorce, suicide, all that. And that was the divine, that was the divine encounter. 
But if I wouldn't, if I if I wasn't aware of what's going on spiritually, I would have just, and I would have, I would have enhanced what the enemy was trying to do. You see, this is why we have to be spiritual minded and not carnal minded. And this is what you hear a lot: discernment. I just got discernment about this person. They're just wicked, man. Yes, you can have discernment of the spirit, but what you gonna do to get that spirit out? Strategy. Sometimes the spirit got to manifest to get it out, right? So you got to be able to use strategy. I'm telling you, it's situational. Amen. Amen. This is this is the y'all want to learn the prophetic. Start moving in love and, and paying attention, and God will increase your prophetic real quick because He knows that you want to see them freed. That's when you'll start getting words and knowledge and seeing visions, all that real quick because it's not for you. If you if you want to increase your prophetic because you just want to be like I'm prophetic, oh. Uh, you're going to be sitting down for a while on the bench. You want to actually, you want to, you want to increase in it? Then do it in love. Do it because you want to see these, these people freed from these chains. Like you actually care. When you, go, when you go evangelize, you really want to see them saved because you know if they don't get saved, they're going to hell. I look at people and I literally see them as family, people I never met. I love them like I love myself. I love them like I love somebody I've known forever. I do it on purpose because I know that this is what the Father likes. I want to please my Heavenly Father. Amen. Amen. All right. Let's get some more. Let's finish this up. 21. Look at this. His breath, his breath kindles coals and a flame goes out of his mouth. This is proof that Leviathan will manifest, will manifest from his tongue. People with a Leviathan will hurt people with anger and what they say from their tongue. Sometimes we hurt people more with our mouth than a physical altercation. What's that, what's that phrase? Words hurt more, or was it words hurt more than what? Maybe break my bones. Yeah. But let me tell you something. Words hurt more than sticks and stones. Someone can say something to you and it'll pierce you and cut you and be with you for the rest of your life. That's why as children, when we get rejected by family men, by parents, mothers and fathers, it literally sticks with us until we get delivered. Majority of the people that need deliverance or that need breakthrough, it's a mommy and daddy issue. I know this because I dealt with it. It hurts as a young, remember when you were like five or six and you went through that situation or when you were like nine or 10 and your mom left you, your dad left you, you saw them fighting or something. Remember how much it hurt? Because you were so pure and innocent. And how much it stung and how much you cried and you couldn't do nothing about it. Remember that? Remember how much, remember, remember, that, that stuff sticks, man. It's words. Those situations where your mommy, they yell at you or they beat you the wrong, not, not the right way, that stuff will stick. When you got molested or raped and they spoke down on you and they treated you like nothing, that stuff sticks and you need deliverance. Because those are the most dark times, man. Because it's after the situation that goes on for so long, those nights in your bed, y'all you know what I'm talking about, depressed, and the feeling won't go away, and you're just crying yourself to sleep every night for years, when you get betrayed by your friend, or that one girlfriend or boyfriend you loved so much in middle school or high school, and, and you, you feel like it's the end of the world, you know that, you know that phrase, the, the older people be like, oh, you, it's not the end of the world, but you feel like it's the end of the world. You're not supposed to embrace that. You're supposed to release that to the Lord. He's supposed to heal you. But a lot of us are not raised the right way in the faith. And that's why we're older in our 20s, 30s, and 40s, still getting deliverance. But that's okay, because God will restore all the time that's lost. Amen. <laughs> Leviathan produces stubbornness and heart, and, um, hard, heart hardness. Look at this, 22, the 22nd verse. Strength dwells within his neck. Leviathan will produce a stiff-necked person, a stubborn person, rebellious. You want to do your own thing. When you come to church, you may pay your tithes, listen to the music, and dance a little bit, but when you go home, you don't care about God. You just do what you want to do. Who deals with that? You come to church, you're cool, but then you go home, and you're just like, I don't feel like praying. I don't feel like reading. I'm going to just do me. Raise your hand if that's you. That's a Leviathan spirit. That's pride. That's you like, man, I don't care no more. You just, just randomly don't feel it. I don't feel like it. I just, I'll, I'll, I'll worship God on, on Sunday at church. I'll just, whenever I go to church, that's cool. 
Let me play my video games. Let me go. Let me go. Let me go. Let me go hoop. Let me go. Let me go out to the mall. Let me just watch Netflix all day. Like you don't care about God. That's pride. Someone who can't re receive rebu re rebuke. That's a big sign of pride. Someone who cannot receive rebu re rebuke is someone who's stubborn and prideful. I'm telling you, as a pastor, I've seen it. When I rebuke somebody lovingly, and they just tense up and run. They go from being, Pastor, I love you, to how dare you say that, and they just dip. That's Leviathan, that's pride. Unteachable. Those people who just can't be taught, they think they know it all. You try to teach them something, and they just try to teach you something. You try to explain something, like, I, I, I know, I know, we had this student, dang, bro. I'm trying to pour into you, but now I guess you're the pastor. That's why a lot of times when I see that spirit operating, I don't even try to teach no more. I just be like, all right, but I'll, let, I'll pray for you. For real, because you can't teach an unteachable person. In submissiveness, especially woman of God, you can't submit to your husband. Let me tell you something. If you can't submit to your husband, you'll never even submit to a pastor. Vice versa, if you can't submit to, submit to your pastor, you won't be able to submit to a husband. Submission is very important. That goes for anyone in the church, leadership and honor. I see it all the time. People think in their mind, I'm supposed to have that position. I'm supposed to be there. I know the Bible more than them. I'm more anointed. In a young church, I see it all day. I see people coming here that even look at me like that. Oh, he's, he, I hear, he's just young. I've been hearing that, from that since the house church. And then we hear here now. You know what I'm saying? I, I, just, I say, yeah, I am young. I receive it in Jesus' name. Praise God, I guess. Stiff-necked. A stiff-necked person. You can't tell him nothing. And sorrow dances before him. The, the folds of his flesh are joined together. They are firm on him and cannot be moved. His heart is as hard as a stone, even as hard as the lower millstone. Leviathan hinders spiritual growth. Your spiritual growth will be stunted if you have a Leviathan spirit operating. You feel like you can't go up. You can't, there's nothing. There's no growth. You're always getting stopped. You're always getting blocked. You always get sleepy when you're trying to pray. Always get sleepy when you're trying to read. And you just give up. It's similar to a witchcraft spirit. Because guess what? Leviathan and Python are both marine spirits. The spirit of pride will try to control you. Like I said earlier. Leviathan's pride will also have a trail of the following characteristics. Let's get into it now. Alcohol use and eventually alcohol abuse. Drug use and eventually drug abuse. Because you know why Leviathan brings shipwreck. Everyone say shipwreck. If in your life, you're always like, boom, boom. Every, finally got the job I've been waiting for for so long. Finally got the, oh, this is supposed to be, oh, this is my husband. Always getting shipwrecked. That's a Leviathan spirit. Leviathan shipwrecked Paul in the Bible. There's deep revelation with this. Leviathan will bring chaos and, come, and disorder in your life. You always feel like it's, everything's chaotic. You can never catch a breakthrough. So you go to the drugs. You go to the alcohol. A string of broken marriages or broken relationships. Whenever you start, who, who in here is married? Let me tell y'all something for all the married people. Whenever you hear something tell you, that's not your wife or that's not your husband, soon you guys will get divorced. Who's heard that spirit? That is a Leviathan. Leviathan wants to shipwreck the marriage. That ain't God. I've heard people come to me and say, I don't think God wants me to be with them. God told me to divorce them. God told me, look, are there situations where, where you can divorce? Of course. But... Just because your husband ain't listening to you like you want him to, or your wife, or how about this, your spouse isn't saved and you don't want to give it time and wait because you got a calling in ministry? You think God cares about your calling more than he does about your spouse? But he cares about your marriage more than, I told my wife today, I said, babe, I will put down ministry for you. I don't care. I just, I just wanted to text her that today. I just felt like it, right? I was like, babe, I'll give it up. I don't care about the, I'll give it up today. If anything in our marriage started happening, where we started dividing, I, I'm not going to be one of those people who fall to adultery. It ain't going to happen. 
by the grace of God, for real, only by his grace. Lonely, a person that wants to be isolated and left alone, judgmental. Leviathan will cause you to struggle with intimacy with God. How about this one? Difficulty saying sorry when you're wrong. That is a Leviathan spirit. And you feel it. I know I need to say sorry. Holy Ghost, say, say sorry. <clears throat> you feel that? <sniffs> nah. I don't feel like I need to. I feel like I'll just take it to the secret place. I'll just, I'll, just, I'll just go tell God. Even though the Bible says to make it right with your brother and sister before you even bring your gifts to the altar. God cares more about you making it right with your brother and sister than tithing and offering to God. There's nothing in the Bible that says don't make it right. Some of you in here need to call people you did wrong. When I came to Christ, I was making it right with everybody. I was like, if I even did anything, I was trying my, I was looking to make it right. I was looking to say I'm sorry multiple times because I knew Leviathan was all up in my life in the world. I had a, Le I had a Leviathan generational spirit. My cousin that I, I, I linked with in Houston, his, my, whole, my whole dad's side of the family is all shipwrecked. They're all divided, eight brothers and sisters. They're, all, they're finally kind of reconciling now. I've seen it in my dad's life, lonely and isolated his whole life, never even met that side of the family until I got older, selling drugs. Crazy, right? That's a Leviathan spirit. You got to say sorry, even if the other person's wrong more than you're wrong. Who cares? That's another key to being fast-tracked, radical repentance. Radical. I'm talking about like you willing to do whatever to make it right. I'll sow into the person's life. I'll, 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 whatever, they, whatever, whatever I know they want, as long as it's not sin, I'll do it to make, to, to, to make it right, to make peace. Even with people that are super wrong, way, like obviously like all the way wrong, they did me wrong, and I, I, I could have handled the situation better. I've had people come to this church, no cap, slander my name, go on social media, slander, 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 slander. And all I did was one thing, one little thing, like I ignored their text message. And when I'm in the presence of God, I feel so convicted, I hit them up and say, I'm sorry for ignoring your text message. And I've seen people break down, I'm so sorry, I put those statuses, I repent, I repent. I'm like, okay. And then I'll cash app them, boom. I'm dead serious. I look, for, I look to sow into my enemies. Because they're not my enemies, the devil is. I want, them to, I want them to know we good. And start praying against that spirit. A Leviathan spirit will always have difficulty repenting before God. Feelings of superiority never want to help or serve others. Look, at this church, you cannot have a leadership position unless you have a servant heart. We look for that. We look for servants. So if you come to the church with an agenda and you think within two months you'll be leading on the microphone, it ain't going to happen. We look for the people who actually serve with the right heart, who actually have a fire. Like, I'll serve whoever, and they mean it. Because I've heard so many people say, I'll serve whoever you want, pastor. One week on productions, they quit one month and, and, and greeters, they don't want to do it no more. They go from showing up on time, now they're late every service. Oh, I can't make it this service. Yeah, because your heart was far from God. Your heart was never for the, the house of God. You don't have the revelation of what you're doing in this, in, this, in this home. You think you're serving me. You ain't serving me. You serving God. I'm, I'm dead serious. He's here, right? His spirit is here. You, you, you can feel his presence tangibly. You see him moving. The Lord is here. So you come to serve with the right heart, not with pride. Those people that are always quarrelsome, always want to defend themselves, never want to receive rebuke, talk about themselves more than they talk about God. Never giving glory to Jesus. Never even saying his name. Scornful anger. Criticizing others all the time. Stubbornness. Rebellion. This is different than stubbornness. This is when you know what you're supposed to do and you still don't do it. Boastfulness. Opinionated when nobody asks you. Always think they have to answer everything but never take advice. Prayerlessness. Look, every, every person that troubles with pride, which is, which is almost everybody, Leviathan is king over the spirit of pride. Let's talk about how we beat Leviathan. 
Isaiah 27, 1 says, In that day the Lord, with his severe sword, great and strong, will punish Leviathan, the fleeing serpent. Leviathan, that twisted serpent, and he will slay the reptile that is in the sea. We beat Leviathan with the word of God standing on truth and love. How does the spirit of pride enter? Let's talk about that. We're almost done. Number one, generational curses. Look at your father and look at your mother. Were they angry and prideful people? If they were, and you are, it's probably generational. Rejection this is one of the biggest ones. I tell people all the time, anyone who deals with pride, they're rejected. They put pride on the forefront to cover up that rejection because the feeling of rejection is so intense and hurts so much that you need to cover it so nobody rejects you. If you're rejected as a young boy or girl and you go through that pain, what happens is when you get older, you say, nobody's going to hurt me no more. I'm going to make it to the top. I'm going to prove myself to this person and this person. That's pride. That's you not healing and getting delivered. That's not normal. Through success and achievement, you can live with the spirit of pride to the day you die, but you will be miserable to that day that you die. There's people who get success and achievement and they, get, they switch up. You, you, you know it. You're like, man, this person switched up. They don't even care no more. They, look at them. They're, just, they're, they're too Hollywood now. You ever seen that? They're too Hollywood now. Here at The Rock, I don't got to say nothing. They know what time it is. I'm in people's businesses more than they, than they even want it. I'm dead serious. I'm always asking people, what's up with you? And they know this, and that's why I had to ordain pastors because I couldn't do it with everybody. So now I got two more that are in everybody's business. We, for real, we ain't gonna just have you at the church sitting in the pews. We wanna get to know you. You, you have to run from us. We're gonna actually hold you accountable, for real. But it's also up to the person to actually want, to want that. Because we don't chase people also. Like we don't, we don't beg people to want to get discipled. If we see that people don't want to receive, they don't want to be teachable, they don't want to listen, they don't want to join the Bible studies, they don't want to show up on time, okay, we pray for them, say, look, you need a change, and then we let the Lord handle it. We see people come in and out of this church all the time. But at the end of the day, that's normal. The body of Christ is the body of Christ. This is not, the rock is not the body of Christ. So we just stay strong, 10 toes down. We know this is a very spiritual place. When there's devil, let me tell you something. This is the easy, the easy part. Casting out demons, prophecy, healing, preaching. Woo, pra praise God. Outside of this, that's where the real warfare happens. People getting hit. We got to be in prayer. We all over the place calling people, phone calls, meetings. Because people getting, they, they, it's always the people who are not in prayer and not in their word that start getting smacked up. And it's our job as pastors to say, look, you are in a different type of church. This is like a special forces. You can't be in compromise in this church. All these spirits that we're casting out, they're getting seven more wicked ones, and they're coming back to watch all the people who get delivered. And we're the covering. So the covering of the church, we see things before it happens. The Lord gives us dreams, gives us visions, gives us confirmations. And we have to warn the flock. We have to protect the sheep by the grace of God. He's the great shepherd, but God has ordained shepherds. You see what I'm saying? So we're constantly in prayer. This is, this is a different type of, this is a book of Acts type church. Think about the book of Acts. Think about what happened to them. They had to travel. They were getting persecuted. Why do you think they were trying to kill them all? Because they were moving in power. The devil don't like a church that moves in power. He wants a mega church, lukewarm church. Those are the easy ones. Some light shows, some good keys, no drumming, that stuff is good, all that's good, but no purity, no holiness, no repentance, no, no gospel, no deliverance. Because honestly, man, it's hard. When you start preaching these things, people don't like it. They don't like you. They start switching on you and they start saying this and that, but that's, that's what comes with it. That's why as a pastor, you know, I was told when I got ordained a pastor, all you're going to get is, what is it? Uh, three nails and a crown of thorns. They said, you're going to get put up on a cross. It ain't what you think. And I was, I was young. I was like, man, whatever. It's going to be lit. We're going to have fun. Because I was, I, was, I was in my evangelist mode. And then, I came, and then I came to the pastoral side of things. I was like, dang, this is crazy. My wife and I on the phone, th three, three in the morning, four in the morning. People can't pay their rent. We helping them out. Next week, I'm out. I hate you. What the heck? 
What do we do? <laughs> Sitting there with, with, with couples about to get divorced. Reconcile the marriage. Yes, yes, they're back. A week later, they get divorced. What the heck? Like, what happened? Why'd you split? What? Like, and we had to sit there and endure that. Being backstabbed, backstabbed, backstabbed. But then eventually you get stronger and stronger and stronger. <laughs> How to overcome the spirit of pride. Last thing. Because gonna, there's going to be deliverance that breaks out. You must truly repent before God. You cannot get delivered if you don't repent. You have to recognize where you're wrong and say, Lord, I confess it. I repent. I change my mind. I'm wrong. I need deliverance. If you felt convicted during this message, tonight's the night for you to repent. Renounce that spirit from your heart. I say, I renounce the spirit of pride. We're going to do that prayer later on. Get deliverance from it. It's crazy because the spirit of Leviathan is a, is a very wicked spirit that you just can't be like, come out of me. God makes it to where you got to go to someone else to pray for you most of the time because it's an act of humility. A lot of people don't want to receive prayer from others. They don't, they don't think they need it. I can go to God. Like some, sometimes, sometimes God will literally have you go to an altar or have somebody else pray for you so you can humble yourself. I've seen leaders come here, pastors, to get delivered. Pastors come to get delivered. I've laid hands on some people that you guys know on social media with huge platforms, casting demons out of them in parking lots because they needed it. They knew that they couldn't get that demon out. They needed someone else with faith to cast them out of them. Intentionally start to serve others without an agenda. If you want to be pride, surf. Literally, look if, look, if you're a married man or woman of God, serve your wife or your husband overboard. Go get them flowers. Go get them food. Go, go do something extra. Go take anointed oil and massage their feet. Do something you've never done. Prepare a bath for them. Cook dinner for them. Make get up early and make breakfast for them. Serve others and you'll see that that demon will have to go. If you know you have problems with somebody at work or in the church, bless them. Get them an, an Amazon gift card. Get them a, a Whole Foods gift card. Get them something, like something that, they, that will make them smile. Because love is the weapon. Amen. What you do in secret, God will bless you openly. And last, be thankful and grateful for everything. Leviathan will keep you from gratitude. There's a revelation with gratitude. Everyone say gratitude. When you're thankful for the things you have, God, God is pleased. When you, when you have the revelation of what God's done for you and you thank him in prayer and in worship, that's a sweet smelling aroma onto him. Did you know that? But when you're always saying, God, I don't have enough. I don't have enough. Not remembering, like the Israelites, how God freed them from Egypt. You're always going to be in a new Egypt. You have to remember what God did for you. That's a revelation of thanksgiving. I preached on this a year and a half ago. I think I'm going to preach on it again later on. But thanksgiving is important. There's a whole ministry of that. Where you can receive from God a lot more when you have gratitude. That's why I said earlier, there's people who come here to worship and they're staring at everybody. Staring at the worship team, staring at the pastor, staring at the, the ceiling, staring at the piano player, staring at the drummer, like they're getting entertained. Look, we up here trying to worship God with y'all. That's why we, we close our eyes sometimes. We, we just focus on the Lord. You see what I'm saying? That's how you receive your blessing. I want to do something. All leadership from the rock come to the front. Deacons, deaconesses, my wife, come on, Pastor Colleen. Here, come here, face, face me. Come face me real quick. Get the oil, because there's someone who's been dealing with a lot of pride. Come on, babe. I got the oil right. Come over here. Look, I'm going to say this. What did I say earlier? That pride, most of the time, you don't know when you have it, right? And that you have to have other people pray for you, right? And you have to humble yourself, right? So you know what I'm going to do? 
I'm going to humble myself before the leadership and get prayed for for pride in front of all of you. Here. Come on, lay hands on me. I need prayer. I just repent and renounce pride in the name of Jesus. Anything that might have came in, Lord, I'm, I, I repent and I confess it to you. Thank you, Father, in Jesus' name.
Are y'all ready to give? Amen. It's an honor to encourage you guys to give. You know why I love telling you guys to give? The same reason why you would go tell somebody about Jesus. Because it'll set you free. Check this out. Poverty is not of God. It's a spirit. It's a stronghold over the body of Christ. It comes with two things. Laziness and pride. It'll keep you bound. And I'm going to prove it through scripture. Proverbs 10, 4 says, He who has a slack hand becomes poor, but a hand of a diligent makes rich. In the translation of the CEV, it says, Laziness leads to poverty. Hard work makes you rich. Diligence is a choice. So, what does it mean to be diligent? It means to seek. It means to work hard. That no matter what you are going through, you're going to continue to work hard. No matter what job God gives you, you will continue to work hard like if you're working for Him, on to Him. I'm going to give you guys some keys to getting prayers answers. Who, who wants to get their prayers answered? Who? Who? Amen. I'm going to give you I'm going to give you three keys to getting your prayers answered. The first key is you work hard. No matter what you do and all you do, you work hard. Even if you don't like it, even if you're not getting the results that you've been getting, even if even if it, if you have to humiliate yourself and lower yourself and do the things that you don't feel like you deserve to do, you still do it like if you're doing it on to God. The second thing you do is you petition through prayer you say Lord I need this he knows your prayers before you even say them say Jesus I need a financial breakthrough to supply for my family I need it God I need it and I place it at your feet God and I know I have faith that it'll be done in the name of Jesus you petition but with that petition you have to bring a sacrifice the sacrifice can be your time Meaning you're going to continue to put in so you could get out. A sacrifice could be money. You know why when you give money, you receive money? Because you reap what you sow. It's not hard to understand. So if you are going to take a seed, a sacrifice, and you say, God, I don't have much, but this is all I got. And you place it at his feet. You put it in the dirt. And according to his word, you work hard, you diligently seek, you continue to pray, you continue to focus on the assignment, and that seed will grow and it will bear much fruit. It will bear much fruit. What's crazy is I wrote this message, I had no idea Pastor was gonna write about Leviathan, I was gonna talk about Leviathan. It's super prophetic. It's funny that you say that, Pastor, because we all know, right? That we're supposed to, Malachi 3, 8 through 10, right? It says that we must bring the, 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 the tithes and the offerings so that the storehouse may be filled and that he will supply a blessing for you that, the, heaven, that the, the gates of heaven will open up and will overflow you to the point where you can't bear it. But then if you read on verse 11, it says that he will rebuke the devourer. Catch that. He will rebuke the devourer. See, in the Old Testament, the devourer was locusts. But in 2023, it's pride. The devourer is pride. So when you bring your offerings, your tithes, you bring it to the storehouse, which is God's house. You plant that seed. God will rebuke the devourer and you will receive that harvest. God is so good. God is so good. Everybody that's going to give, come on. Y'all already know what we're going to do. Get it to your feet. We're going to do a prophetic declaration like we always do. We're going to plant a seed and we're going to command it to grow according to the word of God. Come to the front. Come to the front. Come on. I was going to run through this giving real quickly because it's getting late, but I heard it. God said, amen. I heard it. God said, if they give, then that spirit of pride, that Leviathan spirit is going to break off in your giving. Because you're humbling yourself to give on to the house of God. So come on, come on, come on, come on. There's more people. Let's go. Fill the front. This is the breakthrough right here. This is the breakthrough. 
Thank you, Jesus. Come on. Everybody that's going to give. And for those online, you guys are going to receive a breakthrough too. Continue to plant your seed. Continue to be diligent. Continue to work hard. And in due time, in God's perfect time, you will reap the harvest from what you planted in. I want to challenge all of you guys tonight with a humble heart, understanding everything that Pastor just preached on and everything I just said to give a little bit more today. You're going you're gonna to die to yourself right now as you give. I'm going to do it with you. Don't think I'm just up here doing this about what, just to tell you. I'm going to give a little extra so it hurts. Because like Pastor said, it's not a sacrifice unless it truly hurts. Amen? Amen. Everybody put it up. Put it up. Thank you, Jesus. Father God, in the name of Jesus, Lord, I thank you, Father God. I thank you, Father God, for what you're going to do in these people's lives. I thank you that we're being obedient. I thank you, Father God, that we're dying to ourselves right now. We're placing it at your feet. We humble ourselves, Father God, according to your word, Lord. And we give a seed onto good soil and we command it to grow. We command it to bear fruit because it is according to your word, Father God, that you will rebuke the devourer, Father God, and we will reap the harvest in due time, God. So I pray in Jesus' name, Lord. I pray in the name of Jesus, Lord God, that you, that you shift their hearts tonight, God, and they will work more diligently, Father God. They will work as if they are working onto you. They will give as if they were giving onto you. They will lay it at your feet, Father God, and by the faith and the prayers, they will reap a harvest in due time, God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Everybody say, thank you, Jesus. Say, thank you, Jesus, for my breakthrough. For my breakthrough. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Give it some love. Give Jesus some love. You will break through. You will break through. Trust me. Trust me. Thank you, Jesus. And if you uh, if you need a bucket, if you need a, if you have cash, he's passing it around. Hallelujah, man. I feel peace. God is good. You see, we all need prayer. Amen. Amen. I'm not Mr. Mega Man and I don't need prayer. I need more prayer, if anything. So, y'all can sit down real quick and I'm going to get into the altar call. <clears throat> and again, everyone online, same thing. You with us in spirit and truth, give with excellence. It will bless you. Um... I'm going to give the gospel. Who wants the gospel of Jesus Christ? All right. I get excited. Because it's the power of God on two. And that word power in the Greek is dunamis power. We need the dunamis power. So many people in Texas don't even, they didn't even know what the gospel of Jesus Christ was. Isn't that crazy? At the conference I was preaching at, there was people there, a paid conference, that didn't know the gospel of Jesus Christ, that are Christians. So, I say this, the reason I give the gospel every service and I, and I preach repentance and the remission of sins is because God told me if I did that, he would take me to the nations. He told me in the secret place years ago, he says, son, if you preach my gospel, you tell people to repent and the remission of sins, which is their sins can be washed by the blood. If you preach those things all the time, I will exalt you. You know why? Because the body of Christ has lost the foundation. There's so many people in the churches that don't know. How about this? Watch this. We're going to be interactive. How many people in here are saved? Raise your hand. Okay. I'm ask questions then. Keep your hands up. What does gospel mean? No, 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 you. What is, no, yeah. 
What is it? Yeah. What does it mean? What is the gospel? What does gospel mean? Nope. What does it mean? Good news. Good news. All right. Raise your hand if you're saved. Why is it good news? Why is it good news? Why is it good news? Our sins are forgiven. Amen. That is good news. How are we washed by, by the blood of Jesus Christ? How are we washed by the blood? We're washed by the blood because Christ died to atone for our sins. Okay, what does atonement mean? Clean. Cancel out? How does blood cancel out our sins? Because blood is a representation of life. Woo! You got it. Amen. Glory be to God. And sin is what? Sin is the wages of death. Sin is death. Amen. And I'm asked another question. Why do we have an expiration date on our life? Why was death and sin? How did it enter the world? Over there. And good to hear that you recovered, man. We prayed for you. So, so how did death and sin come into the world? Adam and Eve's disobedience to God. Amen. What did they do? They ate the forbidden fruit which God told them not to eat. Amen. So, the gospel is very simple. Jesus Christ, he atoned for our sins by being crucified on a cross. His blood had to be shed. It had to be the perfect blood of a perfect sacrifice, a human sacrifice. In the Old Testament, they would sacrifice animals and agriculture. Why would they sacrifice animals? Because the animals, the blood of the animals would, would atone for the sins of Israel. They would, <laughs> sorry, they would put it in a what? A bowl, right? And bring it before the what? The altar, which was called the? The mercy seat. Mercy, right? Because they needed mercy, forgiveness. And they kept doing it. And what would happen? People would keep doing what? Rebelling against God. Because they'd be waiting for who? Jesus, the Messiah, to what? Come. And the prophets would prophesy. Hey, Jesus, no, they wouldn't say Jesus. They would say the Messiah, the Christ, right? Is coming, he's coming, he's coming. And everyone thought he was going to be like how? Like David, right? A murderer. Chopping off, you know, people's heads. But the Son of God, who is God, who is the Word, came in a human form, in a vessel, born of a virgin. God allowed His Son to be born of a virgin to prove to everybody that He was not conceived through sexual intercourse. It's supernatural. But every physical vessel on this planet that is actually human must be born of a, of a mother's womb. Jesus says you must be born of water and spirit. Then after that he says you must be born of a mother's he references the mother's womb. I'm going to stand on what the Lord has showed me and other apostles and prophets. That wasn't talking about water baptism. That was talking about being born of a mother's womb because there's beings on this earth right now that look like humans but they ain't humans. That's, deep, that's too deep for some of y'all. Some people don't like that. Oh, he's just making stuff up. Oh, all right. Start getting spiritual and see what happens. God will open up your eyes. So Jesus was born of a virgin, lived, did, 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 did Jesus, was he born just as a little baby knowing everything? Because he had a what? A brain, a heart, lungs. He had to literally develop like we do. And he grew in relationship with his father, which is him connecting with himself because the father is an all-powerful spirit Jesus is the physical revelation of the father Jesus is how the father looks like in a body God wrapped in flesh does that make sense God is triune three in one father son Holy Spirit 
all one but separate persons you see what I'm saying and if, it's, if that confuses you look at yourself you have a soul spirit and body you're triune but you're one so Jesus was born of a virgin lived a life in and out of the temple at a young age and then eventually he had to get baptized why he, John the baptizer John the baptizer he said why why am I even baptizing you I'm not even worthy to even fit your sandals he said because I'm doing it to fulfill all righteousness that's why we need to get baptized if you ever think you don't need to get baptized it's whatever you are wrong it is the first step to discipleship the minute you believe in your heart and confess from your mouth first thing you should be doing is hopping in that water if you don't hop in that water you probably don't really believe because if you get filled with the same spirit I got filled with you're looking for water just like who in the Bible Philip and the what the eunuch the Ethiopian eunuch he told Philip can I do it right there right there Philip was like alright baptize him and transport it but again that's a little bit too deep for some people they won't believe that somebody could literally transport I'm not gonna even teach on that I'll do a prophetic teaching later on another 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 time probably do a conference so Jesus literally got baptized and the Holy Spirit descended upon him like a dove the Holy Spirit is not a dove the Holy Spirit is not fire the Holy Spirit is not is not what you is not a, is not what has been drawn in pictures the Holy Spirit descended upon him like a dove the Holy Spirit is a person has a personality has emotions feelings did you know that he can be grieved he's our friend we commune with him and the Holy Spirit empowered him and said okay, and now it was time now it was time for Yeshua Jesus Christ of Nazareth to do what go from city to city what did he do from city to city what did Jesus Christ do as he was traveling from city to city he taught the good word did the good news he preached that the kingdom of heaven was at hand right what else did he do um, he delivered he casted out demons what else did he do heal the sick he healed the sick what else did he do um, <laughs> raise the dead right did Jesus Christ baptize anybody trick 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 question not trick but a question did Jesus Christ baptize anybody no he sent his disciples to baptize you see what I'm saying he did that from city to city he even empowered 70 and, and the disciples he said go out there cast out demons and, and heal the sick and preach that the kingdom of, that the kingdom of heaven is at hand he empowered them he showed them he operated in supernatural powers like you see at this this center and he said those who believe in the future are gonna do even greater works his ministry was three years we have the opportunity to have 50 years of ministry and what did he amen <laughs> agreement and then after he knew it was time he got betrayed by Judas and he knew he would. Backstabbed. Got arrested. He got whipped, last scorched, crown of thorns on his head. A physical torment that none of us could go through. Never complained, never backed down, never cursed God. Went through it with humility and love because he knew he had to be sacrificed. Just like animals were sacrificed in the Old Testament, he knew he had to be the last and final perfect human sacrifice. There'd be no more sacrifices after him. So he went through it. He put, up, he put the cross up. He walked over a mile. I think in total, it was about two, two to three miles. With a cross on his back. Crown of thorns on his head. Being laughed at. Being spit on. A sinless man. Did nothing wrong to anybody. He went through it for us. And then he went on the cross. Was nailed to the cross took the sins of the world on his back all the sins that we could ever do from the past present and future so, <clears throat> so the sins from the Old Testament Saints the ones who were alive when he was there and even us in the future he took all the sins of the world and sickness on his back went up on the cross and died and he said it's finished and every principality power every demon was disarmed at that point the devil lost okay. 
the devil lost because now humans have a way to go to heaven he fulfilled what the Old Testament prof, uh, uh, saints were waiting for and what we remember and we're waiting for him to come back so Jesus did that for us he was buried he went to hell he went to hell he took the keys of death and hell he preached to the he preached to the Old Testament saints this is what I believe I know there's a lot of controversy in Abraham's bosom and he freed him out and then he showed himself unto his disciples on, after the third day there's so much archaeological and historical proof it's not even funny if you go look and for 40 days he discipled them the ones that, did, that betrayed him the ones that left him the ones that didn't believe they believe now and he breathed on them and said receive the Holy Spirit and the KJV receive ye the Holy Ghost and he breathed on them y'all ever see me breathe on people <laughs> Jesus did it too so if you say that's not biblical then go read your Bible why did he breath on them Jesus did it too and God said we could do greater works than him in faith I could breathe on I could breath they can get delivered and healed I've seen it too many times that's another teaching too but then what did Jesus do he told them you're gonna go to Jerusalem and you're gonna wait and then he rose straight past the clouds in his glorified body they watched him go past the clouds and stared at him in awe and then two angels appeared and told him told them the same way you're looking at him is the same way you see how he came through the clouds he went through the clouds he's coming back through the clouds the same way but he's not coming back as Jesus Christ the Lamb of God he's coming back as Jesus Christ the Lion of Judah with fire in his eyes and he's gonna end the world with fire he's not coming back to tell people to repent he's not coming back to say the kingdom of heaven is at hand repent he's coming back to say you had enough time it's over he's coming back for vengeance on his enemies which are those who don't believe so the so the disciples went to Jerusalem and they tarried an upper room just imagine a, a house with an upper room 120 for 10 days they prayed and they worshiped God and then the Holy Spirit came like a gust of wind and baptized them in cloven tongues of fire. They spoke in tongues. And 3,000 people got saved because they understood them in their own language as they were speaking what some people think sounds like gibberish. People were understanding them in their own language and they freaked out. 120 people speaking in tongues, 3,000 people get saved. They weren't speaking in language like people say oh they were speaking in intelligible language no, no. 120 people and 3,000 like there was a there was the spirit the, of the, the gift of interpretation of tongues was poured out upon the people God by God's grace they understood it so that they'd all be saved and Peter an uneducated man preached very intellectually and they all believed and that's what started where we have the new dispensation of grace after Jesus Christ died was buried and rose amen so the good news is if you ever sinned I'm asking you right there you ever sinned with the white shirt with the pairs have you ever lied before you ever lied before you ever stole before you ever cheated on a test in school so according to the law of God all three of you are supposed to go to hell for one sin me too but the good news is that if you put your trust in what Jesus Christ did and you believe he died on the cross was buried and rose and that he's your Lord and saved you by the blood that he shed it will wipe away all your sins if you repent if you change your mind from the worldly ways from all that stupid stuff that doesn't get us nowhere and say God I'm turning away from all of it and I'm turning to you and I'm gonna be a soldier for you I'm gonna fight for you he will literally fill you with the spirit and you will know because your heart's desires will change the same way you used to smoke dope and drink or like it like I did it changes and you don't like it no more supernaturally you don't have to go to AA a lot of people in AA they need Jesus they go to AA for years trying to get, get over alcohol and they never do you know why because it's not about AA it's they have a demon 
I had demons. I couldn't stop drinking and fornicating. I couldn't stop all the witchcraft. I couldn't stop all the women and porn. I couldn't stop it. But when the Holy Ghost filled me, I completely stopped it by His grace because I was empowered with His Spirit. Demons came out of me. I was healed from a disease. Doctors couldn't heal. And on top of that, a few months later, I started casting out demons, healing the sick. And that's why I'm obsessed with Jesus. He's, I'm radical, and I don't care what nobody says because I know he's the only way. And I studied every religion. I studied Islam, Buddhism, which, bro, you name it. I did it all. I had money. I traveled. Nothing gave me fulfillment. Nothing. Some of you in here right now think you're saved and this message is convicting you and you know you need to give your life to Christ. It's not about looking cool or thinking you're saved. Who cares? They look at me and they, 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 they think I'm the worst of the worst because I got tattoos and I, my testimony. I don't care. I'm going to keep on fighting for Jesus Christ. So if I can do that, if I can go right there and get prayer and repent before a whole congregation, you need to give your life to Christ and your whole life will change. You will have love, joy, peace. I'm telling you, it's the best decision I ever made. I didn't come to Christ, look at I didn't come to Christ as a pastor with a platform, with a building like that. I came to Christ in a small apartment with drug money. Everyone left me. If anything, I left everybody. Sold everything I had. Went all the way down with my money. Lost all my friends. Literally. And I did it for Jesus. I could have kept selling drugs, making money. I had properties. I, I could have I started businesses. I could have kept I could have kept buying, selling real estate, flipping, flipping real estate. I was gonna buy a wine bar. I had to deal with these Indians to put drug money down on a wine bar in PGA. Y'all know what PGA is? West Palm Beach. I would have been a millionaire. Laundered money, multi-millionaire in my 20s. But I turned everything down for the gospel. I'm for real. So, I'm going to pray. If you need to rededicate your life to Christ, or give your life to Christ, and get baptized in that water tonight, on this Tuesday is the night. Don't hesitate. If you go home wet, you go home wet. Who cares? We got that, we got that tub waiting for you. Some of you got baptized as a baby when you didn't even know the gospel. Some of you got baptized as an adult and you didn't know the gospel. Now you know the good news. Everyone say good news. Which is if you repent of your wicked ways, you repent of all the worldly ways, and you turn to God, and you give him everything, you surrender in brokenness, and you believe he's your Lord, he saved you by his blood, he was buried after he died, and he rose from the dead, you will be saved, and the Holy Ghost will fill you. Tonight's the night. And for everybody online too, if you need to give your life to Christ, you can do it right now online too. So we're going to do this. Everyone close your eyes. I'm going to pray. Holy Spirit, touch every heart of mine. Touch. And I pray even for the people online. Convict them. Even for the, I heard the Lord say, and it's on the left side. Even for the person who's been faking that they're saved, doing it for the wrong reasons. You can't hide from God. Truly surrender. You don't come to Christ for nobody else but Christ. No woman, no man. You come to Christ because you believe in him and you love him. There's people in here who've been in the world drinking and smoking. Look, if you're smoking and drinking with no conviction, you need to rededicate your life to Christ. If you've been fornicating, watching porn with no conviction means you don't care, you don't feel bad about it, you, you need to give your life to Christ and receive the Holy Ghost. So on the count of three, I want everyone that needs to give their life to Christ to come run to the altar. One, two, three. Come to the altar. Come on. And for everybody online, put a one in the chat. A one. And we're going to count up all the souls and I'm going to pray for you too. Come to the altar. All right. Amen.
got good news. Look at me, guys. Look at me. Look at me. Look at me. The good news. Right now, your sins are about to be completely washed. The minute, amen. Man, I wish you understood how much I mean this about your sins being washed. You literally get washed by like your sins get washed. You, you know what he does with your sins? He throws your sins into the sea of forgetfulness. He doesn't remember it. It's okay. You know, you know this, you know this, there's spiritual laws. Can anyone on this planet live forever? No, it's a spiritual law. Can you live without blood? No, it's, can you live without oxygen, right? So there's a spiritual law. God never remembers your sins after you confess them. He doesn't care. He literally pray, programmed his mind to forget your sins when you confess them. So if you get reminded of your sins, it's the devil. He's the accuser of all brethren. So when you confess your sins right now and you give it to God, he's going to see you as holy, righteous, pure, spotless, blameless. He's going to see you in the vision, the goggles of his son, Jesus Christ. He's going to see you like Jesus. All of you. Perfect. And you're going to fall. But when you fall, what do you do? Get back up, confess, and keep walking. You mess up when you depart from the faith. When you receive the salvation that comes from Christ, it's a gift. He gives it to you. No demon can ever take it from you from any sin you do. Nothing can take it, but you can give it up. You can take the gift and say, I don't want it no more, and give it back. It's called forfeiting it. You can never lose your salvation from anything you do, but you can give it up. That's why the Bible says, for those who endure to the end shall be saved. Many will give heed to seducing spirits and doctrines of devils, departing from the faith. What y'all are saying is you're going to fight. Are y'all ready to fight for real? I'm going to tell you something. Your friends might look at you like you're corny. You can't live a double life. You can't act a certain way in front of your friends and then try to act holy. That's lukewarm and you'll get spit out of his mouth. You be the transcendent. You be the one who says, I believe in Jesus. What's up? You can wear ones, Crocs, and be a Christian. You don't have to start dressing all with a suit. Your personality never changes, but your character will. So if you like to get, look, however you dress, you dress, who cares? Look how, look how I dress. And I'm a pastor. He's not looking for people who try to act holy. That's the Pharisees. He's looking for people who have a pure heart. You have a pure heart. You have a pure heart. You have a pure heart. Right now your heart's going to get filled with his spirit. Y'all ready? All right. Can I have all the, all the, uh, the, the, the prayer warriors come up here? Deacons, deaconesses, elders, come up please. We're going to lay hands on them. We're going to pray for them. Oh, y'all can go down there. You can go down there. Get, re get ready. That guy's really broken. He wants Jesus. Not saying you have to cry, but what I'm saying is you're, you're, you're ready, right? You're done, right? All right, all of you in the front. I want you all to do this with me. Confess this. Confess this. Say, Jesus, I believe you are my Lord. And you saved me by the blood you shed on the cross. All my sins are washed. I confess all sins. Everyone online say the same thing. I confess all sins that I'm aware of and not aware of. And you forgive me right now. I repent. And I turn away from the sinful nature, from the worldly desires, and I turn to you, Jesus, for your forgiveness. Thank you for forgiving me. You were buried after you died, and you rose on the third day. I believe you are seated at the right hand of the Father right now. 
and you sent the Holy Ghost to fill me right now. Say, Holy Spirit, fill me. Say, Holy Spirit, fill me. One more time. Say, Holy Spirit, fill me. Put your hand on your heart. Put your hand on your heart. Let's pray. I pray right now in the name of Jesus Christ. Go pray. I pray in the name of Jesus Christ right now. Holy Spirit, fill him. 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 Reya soul. Reba saya. Open up your mouth and pray in the Holy Ghost. Hey. Open up your mouth, pray in the Holy Ghost. There you go. Pray in the Holy Ghost. Open up your mouth and pray in the Spirit. Sound mind. Sound mind. Reboso, reboso. Hey, Abasore. Hallelujah. Let's give it up for Jesus. Come on. It's revival. Reviving the body of Christ. Come on, give it up for Jesus. Hallelujah. If you need to get baptized, you need to get baptized in water. When did you get baptized? When you were 11, did you know the gospel? Did you surrender to God? You did it for your family. That wasn't real. Did you really give your life to Christ tonight? Like for real? You dating a girl? You dating a girl? You talking to one? How many girls you talking to? Two? How many girls you talking to? Two? It's not. Wait, let me look, bro. I'm gonna tell you something. You know, you know why? You, you know why I used to do that? Because I, I because I had I had I had, I had daddy issues. It's because you want to be, you want to feel loved. You coming to Christ means you're going to give up all that. And you're not going to have sex till I'm grown. How old are you? 15. Look, I know people in here that got, got saved at 15 too. And they on fire. You're going to do this for real. I'm going to pray for the spirit of the fear of the Lord on your life. You want that? That you'll have reverence to God. That he'll break you down to a place where you'll have so much humility and fear of him in a good way reverence that you'll lead your friends to Christ you're called to lead your friends to Christ you're a leader but if you keep playing both sides it ain't gonna work if rapture comes bro and you're still living in iniquity you won't get taken up this is real talk come into this altar don't do nothing unless, you're, if it, unless your heart is truly for him I'm saying this to save your soul. So you're really doing this. All right, I'm gonna pray for you. What's your name? Malachi. Mal your name's Malachi, bro. Man, you have a calling on your life, bro. Everything's about to change now. I'm gonna pray your prophetic gift in you. I'm gonna pray impartation for the prophetic that it'll increase too. That you'll start having dreams that will put you in order. End times dreams. Y'all, you, you had them yet? Yeah. What you have? Well, this is like a long time ago. I don't really like keep track of the dreams I have because I have a lot. But like, I seen one of like I was walking outside of my house and there was like a lot of spirits in there, but they were like angels and they were just like leading a group of people like like to to a certain place. But like, I just woke up. Like, Okay. 
You ready? Father, in the name of Jesus, I, I pray for this end times prophet, Lord, that you've called him to be. Lord, that you would stir him up in the prophetic. I pray an impartation right now of everything I have, double portion, Lord, as he honors, as he learns to obey. You, Lord, reverence. May the spirit of the fear of the Lord, Lord, the spirit of the fear of the Lord, Jesus, be with him right now. Be, may he be clothed in it. May he love you so much, Lord, and worship you. I see, I, I say this, I'm, I'm going to say what I've seen. I've seen a brother in Christ that I, that I do music with sometimes. His name is Marv. And God showed me him in the vision because he showed me that you're going to do music. So I pray, Lord, that the music he does glorifies you and no one else. I pray you surround him with the right people. Stir him up, Father. In Jesus' name. Amen, Malachi. Amen. Amen. God bless you. God bless you. You need to get baptized. Do you want to get baptized? Come on, let's go. Hey, you need to get baptized? You do? Come on, let's go. I got you. Come on. Go get baptized. What's your name? Eric. Eric, man, go ahead. You have an apostolic calling on your life. Go get baptized. You need to get baptized? You do? You gotta do it for real, for real. Go ahead, you're, you're gonna be a future pastor. Go get baptized. You, get, you just gave your life to Christ? You need to get baptized? Come on. Get baptized, teacher. Look at me. You dealing with lust? Pornography. And it's condemning you a lot. I feel it in the spirit. Is your dad the, your, your, the, the, a role model in your life? He's not. He's not. A, is he? Is he kind of absent? And that causes you to have issues with trusting men, and also causes you to want that that feeling, feeling good in the flesh for the porn. It's a spirit of addiction. The Lord showed me a spirit of addiction that wants to lead you into drug use. Have you already been using drugs? A lot? And you're young. How old are you, like 18, 19? How old are you? 26. You're 26, you look young. 26 and you use a lot of drugs. A lot. It's a spirit of addiction. It's not just a spirit of lust. And it comes in through rejection. Do you want to get delivered? How bad do you want it? I want to be free. I'm tired of being, being bound to porn and to addiction. Forgive your father. Forgive him. I forgive him. You just hesitated when I say that. Was it hard to forgive him? Can you really forgive him? Mm -hmm. You mean it. Say, Lord. Lord. I forgive my father. I forgive my father. Have you been dealing with homosexuality? Thoughts? Mm -hmm. But I was... What? You can say it. When I was little, I was... Raped? I, was, I don't know. I was molested many times by a lot of people. By a lot of people? And it causes you to have flashbacks of that stuff. But you don't want it. That's the root. You about to get delivered, bro. I want to be. Tonight's the night. Come over here. The Lord told me you need love. You, don't, you lack love. Like you don't have a lot of love in your life. Is that true? I mean, my mom, she loves me. You know why people go to the addiction? Because they lack love. Because you feel like you're not loved. Because you feel like nobody, like it's, like it's like isolation. I want you to forgive the people who molested you. Forgive me. Like for real, for real? Mm -hmm. You're gonna let it go, forgive them 100%. This is good. This is good, bro. It's about to be a breakthrough in your life. Okay? 
also what you said, the sermon about Leviathan, I feel like I deal with that too. Cause okay. I isolate myself, I push everybody away. Pride. Hmm? That's why I said you feel that you, you, that's, that's why that's, you lack love. You push people over, you lack love. So I'm gonna pray for the love of God to fill you and you get delivered from this demon. Say, Jesus. Jesus. I forgive. I forgive. Everybody who molested me. Everybody who molested me. I forgive everybody who hurt me. I forgive everybody who hurt me. So I just seen a vision. You were by an ice cream truck. And something significant happened to you by an ice cream truck. Do you remember? You were young. You were like, you had to be like between four and six years old. And something traumatic happened. Um, I'm going to pray the Lord reminds you. A lot of times we, we need to go back to the past to get delivered from certain things. The Lord's going to teach you more about deliverance. Okay? But well, you're going to get the big dog out, Leviathan. So say, Jesus. Jesus. I renounce Leviathan. I renounce Leviathan. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. I renounce rejection. I renounce rejection. I renounce fear. I renounce fear. I renounce pornography. I renounce pornography. I renounce addiction. I renounce addiction. I renounce pride. I renounce pride. I, re I renounce isolating myself. I renounce isolating myself. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. I'm a, amen. I'm gonna pray now, okay? Every unclean spirit, come out now. Come out now. Out. Come out of him. I bind that spirit of Leviathan. Yep. I bind that spirit of Leviathan in the name of Jesus Christ. I bind that serpent spirit in the stomach, wrapped around his intestines, in the name of Jesus Christ. Unwrap the same way you came in, and any Jezebelic spirit that also came in through the rape and molestation, witchcraft, fire, fire, out of the mouth, all the way out, all the way out, all the way out in Jesus' name. Do you have pride? Are you willing to let go of your pride? Yeah. You have to really understand what pride is and let it go. You're done with it. Mm. You're gonna open up the people now. Yes. I want you to take a deep, deep take a deep breath. There you go. Lord, I pray that you fill him with love in his heart right now. Love. Love. May his whole being be saturated with your love. Peace and joy. Hey. There we go. Stir up the prophetic in him too, Lord. I pray that you ignite his call as an evangelist. Activate. Lord, may you break him, show him, bless him, protect him, favor him. Have angels surrounding him, Lord. Teach him more. In Jesus' name. Amen. What's your name? Jose. I'm proud of you, man. Thank you. That's big, bro. That's big that you uh, released that. You ever told anybody that? Mm -mm. Your life's about to change, man. You see God a lot. Pray and read a lot. God's going to start delivering you more. You're in the beginning stages. You need to get baptized? Do you? When did you get baptized, bro? Uh, I was little. <laughs> when you were little? Did you, did you know the gospel? Mm. See, this is right. You have your own free will. It's up to you to get baptized. I told you the process, though. And I told you the pride, the pride will keep you from the blessings. Submit to God, resist the devil, and he'll flee from you. His word says, repent, believe, be baptized in water. Not me. The word of God. Submit to God, resist the devil, and he'll flee from you. You have an option to go get baptized if you want, my brother. All right? God bless you. Whoa! That's a lot of witchcraft items. Look at that. Hallelujah. Who gave these up? Who gave these up? Wow, praise God. Y'all see that? Evil eyes, hamsters. That's a lot of hamsters and evil eyes. You see, you don't need this. If you're wearing this online, get rid of it. This don't protect you. 
It's called idolatry. By wearing these objects and putting your trust in, 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 in little stones and crystals and symbols to protect you, you're saying, God, you're not powerful enough and you're not big enough and I need a stupid rock to protect me instead of trusting in the Most High God. This is bad and demons can have legal right over your life for idolatry. So if that's you, I want you to put a two in the chat. Put a two, take it off your wrist, take it off your body, take it out your house and throw it away. Hallelujah. All right, who needs deliverance? Stand up. I'm going to pray against that spirit of Leviathan. I want you guys to confess. I want you guys to renounce. I want you guys to repent. And I want you guys to forgive. Please forgive. Hey, David, spirit of David. I prayed for your son for a while. How's he doing? Watch what happens to him, bro. I took, I, I prayed for him for like two weeks straight on my prayer list. He's gonna, he's gonna have a vision or a dream, an encounter with Jesus Christ. Watch. I, the Lord put it on my heart to pray for him. He's gonna get saved. He's gonna lead people out of the LGBTQ community. Watch. The Lord is good. So everyone say, Jesus, I confess my sin. Now start confessing the pride, whatever it is. You heard the sermon. If anything resonated with you and you need to let it go, confess it. Confess it all. Now say, I renounce. And start renouncing. I renounce pride. I renounce the, renounce the demons you know you need deliverance from and just say, I renounce everything I'm aware of and not aware of. I confess everything I'm aware of and not aware of. And say, I repent. Say, Jesus, deliver me from every demon. Say, I break every generational altar. I sever every generational curse attached to my bloodline with the battle axe of the spirit. Say, Father, I want to be used. I want to be used. Free me from these chains. I repent of all the sins of my ancestors. In Jesus' name. Say, Jesus, these demons ain't my friends. When they leave, they're going to the abyss. In Jesus' name, I forgive everybody who's hurt me. I want you guys to say their names out loud and why you forgive them. I'm going to say this now. If you can't forgive, you won't get delivered. I can't go through a forgiveness teaching because deliverance needs to break out. It's getting late. So please, 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 please forgive. Please, 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 let it go. Say, I forgive everybody who's hurt me. Everybody who's wronged me. I forgive them just as you forgive me. In Jesus' name. All right, it's time. Put your hands down or up, whatever you want to do. Close your eyes if you want to. Focus on the Lord. We're going to start praying. Y'all ready, prayer warriors? Look for anyone manifesting. Everyone put your hands down for a second. If you begin to manifest or feel something in you moving, I want you to raise your hand and we're going to pray for you, okay? Close your eyes, relax. I want you guys to relax. <clears throat> in the name of Jesus Christ, I bind every unclean spirit operating in anybody's temple right now. Any spirit of unbelief. Any spirit of Leviathan. Any spirit of Jezebel, any spirit of Python, I bind with a threefold cord that cannot be easily broken. I paralyze every demonic spirit. You cannot go in any area of the temple. You stay where you at. And on the count of three, I command every demon at the sound of my voice, by the blood of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, to come up, come out, and go to the abyss. In Jesus' name. One, two, three. Ow!
and out now. Up and out now. Put your hand up if you start feeling something. Kevin, right there. In the name of Jesus Christ. He has his hand up, Kevin, right there. With a camel hat. Hey! Out of the soul. Out of the body. Ow! Every spirit of fear and rejection. And I command you to come out and go to the abyss. Every demon that leaves goes straight to the bottomless pit. Our oh, fear, go. Fear, go. Our oh, pride, go. Every unclean spirit of Leviathan. Our oh, pride. In the name of Jesus Christ. Come out. Spirit, you dealing with pride? A lot of you deal with pride. You, de you dealing with huh? A lot of chaos in your life, and you deal with sexual immorality too. You completely stopped. Is there anything that you want to renounce? Because pride will keep you from your deliverance if you don't release what's going on in your life. Anger. I'm going to pray for the deliverance. I'm also going to pray for the spirit of the fear of the Lord in your heart. Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, I pray for the spirit of the fear of the Lord, that you would engulf him, Lord, that you would mantle him with the spirit of reverence, fear to you, Lord, that you would begin to break him down Remove anybody in his life that's not for him, Lord. I'm going to say it again. Anyone that's not for him, Lord, that's causing him to lust or be sexually immoral, but I pray that you remove him, convict him. The Bible says after pride come with a great fall. Lord, even if he has to fall to get back up stronger, let it be so. Have angels surrounding him. Bless him. Favor him. Protect him. You'll never leave him, Lord. You love him. In Jesus' name, I pray for a sound mind too. Sound mind. In Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you, my brother. Amen. How you doing? You need deliverance? You dealing with a spirit? What are you dealing with? I heard the Lord told me that. And he said that it's a Jezebel spirit. You ever been delivered from a Jezebel spirit? Pastor Colleen, come here. Any other woman that's having issues with reproductive stuff, come to the altar. Come on, let's bring her to the front. If you're having, okay, I'm going to say this. If you're having issues with menstrual cycle, reproductiveness, that is not normal, that is a spirit. We have seen people come get prayed for and begin to reproduce. We've seen people get prayed for and their cycle normalizes. That is a Jezebel spirit operating and you need to get delivered. Line up. Y'all are about to be completely changed today, tonight. All of you at the front, I want you to say this. I'm going to first say this. All of you love Jesus, right? Have, I'm going to ask if raise your hand in the front if you deal with control. This is where I see it. People truly want to repent. If you, if you control men or people, mainly men, when you're in relationships, raise your hand. Okay. If you deal with lust, raise your hand. If you deal with witchcraft in your dreams, like snakes, spiders, raise your hand. That is all signs that you're dealing with a Jezebel spirit. So I want you to do this. Say, Lord. Close your eyes, put your hands down. <laughs> Say, I shatter. I destroy every altar of bow that's empowering any Jezebelic spirit. Say, I bind bow to Jezebel and every witchcraft spirit as well. I renounce Jezebel 
I renounce control. I renounce lust. I renounce sexual immorality. I renounce pride. I renounce rejection. Say, Jesus, deliver me and heal me. I'm your daughter. I deserve to be healed by the stripes you took. Put your hand over your area that you're dealing with. I'm going to pray. My wife's going to lay hands. So Lord, I pray right now in the name of Jesus Christ. Every Jezebel spirit operating in any area of the body, come out. I command Jezebel, come out, let's go. Come out. Come out. Come out. Come out of them. Come out of her. Come, yep, come out of her. Yes, you're coming out. Jezebel, come out. Come out. Yeah, you have to go. Go to the abyss. Come out. Yes, you do. You have no legal right now. Come out of her. Yes. Ow! 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 Leave. I bind you to bow. I bind you to witchcraft. Come up and come out of the mouth. Now in Jesus' name. Now in Jesus' name. Out of your... You ancient Jezebel spirit. You generational Jezebel spirit. Come out. Come out. You're caught. Leaf. Go to the abyss. Go to the abyss. Come out of this woman of God. And every python come out of her back. Unwrap. Fire through the body. 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 Yep. Fire through the body. Fire through the body. Ow. 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 Torment that Jezebel spirit, you can't stay in. Yep. I commission angels to stand around her right now. Yep. And, yep. You see them in the spirit. Out now. All of, yes, you have to go. I take you to the, the courtroom of heaven. Your verdict is guilty. You have no legal right in this woman of God. She's repentant. She's renounced and she's forgiven. You can't cause no more blood issues. Yep, let's go. Let's go. There we go. All the way out, too. All the way out. Those are the angels. The angels are literally getting, up, getting that spirit out. I felt their presence. Ow! Angels, get that demon out. Ow! 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 All the way. All the, all the way. All the way. Out of the stomach. Put your hand on the stomach. Jenny, come here. I need a deaconess. Come here. Maria, come here. Put your hand on the stomach. Not you. Sorry. Deaconess Maria, put your hand on the stomach. It's a Jezebel spirit. Come out of her stomach. And I command every other demon. Come out of them. Come out. Now. Now. Out. 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 out, out. Come out, Jezebel. Forgive your father. Come out. Every Jezebel spirit, come out. Renounce fear. Forgive your, hey, listen to me. Forgive your father. Forgive your father. But forgive your father. Renounce fear. And forgive your father. I'm trying to help you, but I can't be here forever. Let go of pride. Have you committed, have you committed adultery? Have you ever slept with a married man? This is the time where you can get free. It's an altar in the spirit realm. I know what I hear. You have a choice to admit it and get free, or you can stay in bondage. Have you done that? I'm gonna give you time. I pray the spirit of the fear of the Lord that the Lord will reveal it to you in Jesus' name. Everything leaf. 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 Have you ever been part of a church and you dishonored the church? Have you ever been part of a church and dishonor the, the leaders? Yeah. Multiple times. Yes. I want you to repent of dishonor so that God can free you right now. You're not married. You are married. Where's your, where's your husband? And you're still married to him. Have you ever had same-sex attraction? Kind of, yeah. 
and you slept with the, you, you, mess, you mess with a woman? No, never. But you had the attraction. And when I was a kid, I kind of thought about it, but I never followed through with it. I, I like men. I love, I'm yeah. attracted to men. Okay. Did you ever deal with incest? No. With a cousin? No. When you were not, little? No, I don't recall any. Okay. I'm going to pray for you. Put your hands down. Okay. I break every generational curse of incest, sexual morality off her. And I command every demon to come out of her stomach. Every Jezebel spirit, come out now. You're going to get delivered. Come out. Come out. Come out. Out of her stomach. Out of her stomach. No more menstrual cycle issues. Come out. All the way. All the way. All the way. Leave her. Leave her. Every witchcraft spirit come out too. Hey, how about sorry? Any altar of witchcraft in her bloodline or from anything she did be broken in Jesus' name. Everything go. Everything go. Ow! Leave her. Leviathan leave too. Come out of her mouth. All the way out of her mouth. Out of her mouth, Python. Out of her mouth. Ow! All the way. 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 Leaf. Eat. Leaf. Fire through the back. Fight. Leave her stomach. Leave her head. Leave her back. Ow. Ow. Everything causing medical issues. Leave her. Now in Jesus' name. Now in Jesus' name. All the way out. Witchcraft spirit. Hey, hey. Sierra Masu. Eki alaba serre. Rimantore bialia. Rekotuye. Loose from her head. Go to the abyss. Go to the abyss. Yo, come out of her. Come out of her. Come out of her. All the way. There we go. Fear leave to. Pride to. Everything go. There we go. Come out. There we go. Come out. Come out. You wicked spirit. Come out. Go to the abyss by fire. There we go. There we go. Ah, there we go. All, all the way out. All the way out. All the way out. Leave her back. Leave her back. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Leave her. Leave her. Leave her. Leave her. Leave her. In Jesus' name. Be good. What did you just feel? You felt something come out in your mouth. As a python spirit from witchcraft in the past. I've done a lot of stuff. No worries. <laughs> I used to live in New Orleans. You know, I think that I found a little, I don't know. I've done a lot of Bring stuff. Bring it. Yeah. Get rid of it. Good to see you. Same. Amen. You got deliverance? Come out of her. Everything go. Everything go. Slap by two ribbons. All the trauma and abuse that she dealt with in the past. Yep, I seen it in the spirit. Any physical or physical abuse. She was Ahab out. Treated wrongly. In the name of Jesus Christ. All the physical abuse that she dealt with right now. I command every spirit that came in through that abuse. Every spirit that came in here to comfort her during that time. Ow! Leave her. Rejection go. Rejection go in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. All of it go to the abyss. There we go. Lord, fill it with your love right now. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Yes, I got your spirit of rejection coming out of you. Tavia, come around. Come around. Give her, give her love. Let me ask you a question. Have you gave up talking to boys? On social media? But when you get your phone back, are you going to go back to talking to boys? Before you had your phone taken away, were you talking to boys? Many? Because you like the attention? Because you don't get attention from your father? So you look to guys for attention? And even girls? Never used to. used to. The Lord wants to give you love and heal you because He loves you. You're young. How old are you? 
15. You shouldn't be doing the things that you, it's not normal. Are you willing to repent for real? You want to be free to give your life to Christ for real? Amen. Come on, baby. You're going to get deliverance right now. But I want you to forgive your dad. Forgive your dad for real. Amen. Remember? Yes, I was. You were a victim of sexual abuse? When I was like 21, and I remember that I blamed God and because I thought that I wasn't um, and worthy. Yeah, I didn't deserve that, so I, I think that I was like four to five years. Mad, real mad. Yeah, I, I was really mad at God. And did it cause you to do the wrong things? Yeah. Sleeping married men? Well, no. I was just with my boyfriend at that time, but okay. it wasn't the, it wasn't the same. And I always thought that um, it was my fault because uh, I had previous relationships with my boyfriend. So I think that it Let was like... the boyfriend like a, that you were with, was he married? No, we, we were married. Oh, was he married to somebody no, else? No, no, he wasn't married. Where's he from? He's from El Salvador, like me. Oh. I am from El Salvador. Okay, and did he have a wife in El Salvador? No, no. We were like the same age. But I think that, um, I don't know, I, I always blame for, I always blame God for the things that I want you to do this real quick, okay? Just in case, I want you to say... I break to say Jesus. Jesus. I break every altar. I break every altar of sexual morality. Sexual adultery. Adultery. Fornication. Fornication. So I repent of it all. Say Jesus. Say Jesus. I love you. I love you. And I confess. And I confess. Hate towards you. Say hate towards God. Hate towards God. Lord, I forgive you. Lord, I forgive you. Forgive me. Forgive me. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Jesus name. Pray for you, okay? Right there. In the name of Jesus Christ. Right there. Everything go. No, don't pray with me. Receive it. In the name of Jesus Christ. Everything. No, no, no. Don't pray. Okay? I'm going to pray for you. I can already feel the spirit in your head. In the name of Jesus Christ. Every spirit go. Leave her head. Leave her head. Leave her. Leave her. Come out of her. I command an entire area, woman area, to be healed. Everything to be made whole. Leave. Everything go. All trauma through sexual abuse and every spirit that came into the trauma. Father, may you clean the house, close the doors. And fill it with your love. In Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you. God bless you. You're a soldier. Keep fighting. All right. All right. Hallelujah. Let's give it up for Jesus, fellas. It's 10.38. about that time. Did you get prayer already? Woman of God, did they already pray for you? Okay, she's just at the altar, just chilling? Okay. All right. Where's Deacon Carlos at? Okay, Pastor Duran, I need you to end the service. And after you're done. I do. Y'all ready? Let's pray. Stand up. Let's pray. I'm going to pray a blessing over you guys, a benediction. Who's been having car issues? Raise your hand. Yeah. There's a lot of attacks on cars. This might sound crazy, but you need to pray over your car. If Paul prayed over handkerchiefs, we can pray over objects. 
So, Father, in the name of Jesus, let's pray real quick. I pray, Lord, that everyone dealing with mechanical issues on cars, that you would restore it, Lord, that you would give them a financial breakthrough, that they would have a smooth, smooth ride in their vehicle, Lord. I come against every Leviathan spirit causing chaos in their lives. Father, assign angels to be with them, Lord. Get them through the week. As they pray in the secret place, I pray that the presence of God would be so thick and saturated in their atmosphere, Lord, that all they would do is weep. I pray everyone gets safe, gets here safe on Saturday, and everyone who came from out of the state gets back to where they're from safe too, or even the city. Bless them, keep them, protect them. Have angels surrounding them everywhere they go, according to Psalm 91. May they take charge over the saints. Those who are to inherit salvation, the heirs of salvation. In Jesus' name we pray and the church says together. Amen. And the church says together. Amen. And the church says together. All right. Everybody come back on Saturday. It's going to be lit. Bring everybody you know. Amen. I love you guys. See y'all Saturday.